Uh, Aldo and Kevin. Good morning, everybody. Uh, stand by, please, Kevin. And I'm just still busy talking, but I'll let you in on the secret. Okay, go, Kevin. Uh, no, I was going to say that he sent, he started us on the descent long mm -hmm. before we reached top of descent. Mm -hmm. Yes, correct. Um, and of course, I think like all of we, we just we went into um, into old intervention. Mm -hmm. which brings you down at a thousand feet a, a minute yes you know until it catches up with its with its descent path good uh, puts you on the right descent path but he he took us on that descent path directly to the first waypoint on the ils mm -hmm. that was the direct that we were going to mm -hmm. so what we should have done was we should have changed our descent path in the fmc Mm -hmm. to accommodate that because when we got there we were four or five thousand feet still too high exactly because the the fmc was trying to bring us down on the descent path which was had the star in it yes correct so you had to actually go into your fmc and go direct to and sort it out yeah. okay yeah. yeah so so there are a couple of tricks the guys on stream that was here yesterday they'll know about it now uh we don't want to fly into mountains again and we we have been discussing ways around it so that's just one good tip there um given so we'll give it a bash the the big story is as pilot in command you need to learn and we we were harshly reminded yesterday that the atc is not the boss you are the boss you need to override when you need to override these decisions you need to okay and you need to have your eyes open you can't just blindly follow him and i know it's it's something as flat submers tend to do you know they you think they're little demigods or something and you just listen to them but the the person who was doing atc here yesterday either was not concentrating, had the wrong um, clearance levels on his charts, the, in other words, the wrong charts or uh, whatever, you know, something happened. Uh, and uh, Kevin ended up in the mountains. I almost ended up in the mountains and Uncle John was so high he had to do a go around. So that's the backdrop, the background of all of these things. So um, based on that and also based upon uh, the popular request in Discord this morning. I'm going to treat this as a mini training session. I'm going to just quickly walk through the whole setup of the Zebo and getting going and and all these things. Uh, so, uh, Christian, I know you've muted your mic. Um, deep breath, buddy. Um, if you can, if you have a mic, I'd like to hear from you sometime because uh, I know you're new and you, you were looking forward to learn the Zebo. Uh, if you don't want to talk with your voice just drop a line here in skymatics chat talk in skymatics chat with me uh, above your head there um, and tell me if there's anything specific you need or want or if i go too fast then just slow me down so the rest of you guys you're welcome to go you you go and enjoy yourself um i'm gonna take it slow and steady and just work through the whole process um, of getting going and doing this flight as if it's a training session kind of a thing okay and that's about it. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, everybody on Discord. We've got a nice full house. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen guys here in Discord. And as you can see there on the stream, quite a few guys. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine that I count now. Uh, has anybody departed already? Or, or is this... Nobody yet. Uh, Nico has just changed me back to runway 36, by the way. Oh, okay. yeah, a few, yeah, a few have gone. Two, eight, and uh, one other, I think. Okay. I don't see them on the web eye. That's why I'm asking, Reggie. That's why I'm asking. Two, eight is still taxiing, so he's still on the ground. There's nobody in the air yet. That's right. Um, unless, uh, unless the A320 that's up there already. Oh yeah, that is not one of us. I don't recognize that name. But anyway, he's also going to Antalya. This seems to be a very popular route in Turkey, eh? Yeah, it is. Good morning, Tommy. I don't know if I said morning to you, but anyway, now I'm with my full wits. Good morning. Right, there's Uncle John. Who's 28 again? No idea. 
Uh, oh, that's yes. Uh, he's he's muted, so that's why he's not answering. Okay, good. So let's start from the beginning. I've spawned into the Zebo mod. I'm going to start with the most controversial and probably the most important aspect of the Zebo mod at this point in time and it is a temporary measure that's been in place since X-Plane 11.26 all right we are now on X-Plane 11.55 and it's still relevant okay a lot of flight simmers overestimate the capability of their computer so one of the first things they do is they uh, have the sliders too too far to the right anything on this side that's cpu based anything on this side is supposed to be gpu based even though my gpu with 8 gig ram suffers like hell when i pull my textures a little bit more it just doesn't like it my frame rates drop to nothing so this this is my settings okay um when i get into a place where my fps is really low i simply pull my world objects one notch to the left okay so don't overestimate it and the reason i'm saying this is why i'm starting here is the zebo mod is not an aircraft it's a plugin all right contrary to popular belief um and I think most aircraft in X-Plane actually works that way, but a lot of guys don't seem to understand what it means. So in the plugin, there are scripts that need to run. Some of those scripts are X-Lua, which is your native X-Plane scripts, and then some of it is C++. The C++ are not prone to the problem, but the X-Lua scripts, what happens is if you have a potato computer and you overestimate what your computer is capable of doing, what happens is some of those Lua scripts do not load properly when you load the Zebo mod. And that's why you get silly and weird and wonderful things happening to you. So what we do, in the beginning we said, load the Cessna 172 first, wait until your hard drive stops spinning, then load the Zebo mod. That was a good solution for a long time. And then a lot of these clever people out there thought they were very clever and they started telling me I'm talking nonsense and all kinds of other stories. And I just laughed. Okay, so at the end of the day, what I've been doing, and a lot of you would have seen it on my streams, okay, is I go up to... Right, let me show it to you this way. Let me show it to you this way. Display capture. Oops, wrong button. You see, there's a developer menu at the top, and there's a, a reload aircraft, the current aircraft, skip art reload. All you do is you click that button. All right, so the moment you do that, it actually goes and it reloads all the scripts. Hello, right? It reloads all the scripts and you are sure of having a properly loaded Zebo mod. Okay. Now, if you look at Flight Factor to name one other aircraft, they actually put a splash screen up to hide what they're doing behind the scenes, if I can call it that. And it's not because they're doing something wrong. It's because they're simply forcing a reload. There are other aircraft as well. I just thought of Flight Factor first. The guys are clever. The developers are more clever than the user. And when there's a reload necessary, they force it. Okay. Um, there's just no splash screen that comes up and the script isn't forced to reload automatically in the Zebo mod. So there you go. Uh, you have to do it manually. And it doesn't matter whether you think you're clever or not. It doesn't, it, it's got no relevance to the argument. All right. Just because it doesn't need it on your computer, what you need to do is just go, whew, thank goodness, I don't need it. There's no point in you arguing the fact. The next guy with a slightly lower spec computer or slightly higher uh, amount of scenery, of add-ons, or the incorrect settings that I showed you, because that guy has got a problem, you know, you can't invalidate him and his problem. All right. So when, when I suggest this, it's not to be funny, it's not to be silly, it's not to uh, be a pain in your ass. It is to tell you this is the way out, all right? So if you don't want to use it, don't use it. Don't come cry if the Zebo mod doesn't work the way you want it to. You know, that's the risk you take. It's just, if you're willing to take it, take it, okay? If you don't want to take a risk and you want to be sure that the Zebo mod runs optimally every flight, you go and do the developer reload. It's easy as that, okay? So, like I said, the most controversial, but now it's done. Um, use it, don't use it, lose it. Whatever. It's up to you. I've given you the reasons for it. 
Uh, then, okay, when we spawn in, obviously certain things are set, certain things are not set. I am not sure because I have not played with it. I'm not sure whether, where is this now? Um, whether all these presets and things have been fixed. I know at one point in time a lot of these things didn't work, so I'm not going to go into that. It's absolutely irrelevant. Um, and before I continue, I forgot. Guys, good morning, Sasso. Um, I'm sitting here in the general population here on Discord, and obviously some of these guys want to fly. I see some of them have muted themselves, uh, while others are obviously still listening and, and things like that. If I need to move to the room next door, guys, please tell me. Are you good? Can I stay okay. here or do you want me to move? Good morning. Morning, Sasa. Well, I think it's okay. All right, okay. Yeah, the guys have become clever. Morning, Sasa. Morning. Right. Morning. So, um, anyway, let's continue then. Um, I wrote a very brilliant, if I might say so myself, and I, I don't mind saying it, uh, Zebo install guide that gives you all the relevant specifications. And all you need to do is to go read it, to find it, and to set up your Zebo mod the way that it should be set up. Um, there are variations, and obviously certain guys have got the demand, the need, whatever you want to call it, to set it up differently for the airline. So, you know, everything is given to you. You must just go figure out what to do, when to do it. Morning, Ryan. Um, once your Zebo mod is set up, it's quite easy to go through. Um, even in my private hangar, and the link is in the notes below the video, you'll find my screenshots of all my settings that I use. If you don't know any better, if you don't know what it needs to be set at, at least go and follow my lead. Just look at my pictures, set up your SIBO mod then accordingly. Okay, and uh, that will be the basis then of where we start, just quickly to run through everything. So the way I flight plan is obviously through the Skymatics VA, but the principle is exactly the same. You don't need to join the VA, you know, if you have the tools available to you. So my first stop always when I do flight planning is Navigraph. All right. There are a couple of things that I need to do. So I'm going to quickly go to the bigger one. Give me a second. Let me start the, the desktop version, which is a bit bigger, easier to see. Right. So for me, what is important, first of all, is I need to go and find the airport. So to start the planning, you go into manual, you type in your, your airport information. This route has already been set up. So once I have the airport, it's easy enough to open the charts. And then at the bottom here, you'll see I actually bookmark them. All right. So you pin them. There's, there's pins. You just click on the pin. And then you get your your airport layout. I, I don't think anybody can really consider himself a good pilot if he doesn't even know what the place looks like where he starts from or where he ends up at. You know, so it's very important to understand the layout, the the actual runways. It's important then uh, after you've done this, we'll move on to the weather, right? So we're gonna have a look there. Um, I'll show you a couple of ways of figuring out weather and stuff. And because we're on Iveo, it's gonna be you know, just one way of showing you quickly. So that's where we are at. Um, I happen to know from looking at the ATIS, if we click on the actual ATIS there, we don't have to listen to it. There is the whole ATIS given to us and it actually tells you which departure runways are active. All right, so I'm standing over over here and you can see 3.6 is going to be the closest to me so I'm going to budget on 3.6. Right, so all I do is I go to the runways, I make sure that I pick runway 3.6. Then if we go to the departure, the, the new 
well, current public release version of the Navigraph desktop charts actually is very good with its predictive function. So it's easy enough to see which one uh, is is given to you. It's kind of isolated right there. And all you do is you click on that little button and it will then uh, put your standard instrument departure in there for you. It's easy as that. Right. Um, the actual route I get from the VA, you can get it from wherever. Doesn't matter. It's, as long as it's a, a flyable, valid route, you can add it in there. And then at the end of the day, what we need to do is the same on the other side. We're going to go find the charts. Taxi. These are airport charts. So now we see that we've got runways 18 and runways 36. And again, what we need to do is find some other weather source that's relevant to your flight sim. Please don't go to an external source if it's not in sync with your uh, flight sim. So for me, the easiest way to do is to just go to my weather engine and I suggest you guys do the same. Um, uh, where is this thing? X and Myra. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in that. I'll show you another way of doing it as well just now. So there we go. Over here we can see all kinds of bits and pieces of information. So there it's talking about runway 18 Charlie and you've got the winds and you can also see it's a little bit variable and then you've got winds and stuff for the other runways. Now, um, from experience, I know now that on Iveo they like to give you runway 18 Charlie. For your arrival right so we know that that is relevant um so what we did was we obviously uh, looked at runway uh, 18 charlie and the ils i chose final mm -hmm. because if hello sorry antonio anyway uh probably a mistake right so that's my runway and then it's easy enough to just quickly select which one of the sets will go there. As you can see, it changes the description easy enough. And you can see which ones, which we want that one, obviously. But as easy as that. So once that is done, I typically I copy this. I go put it into the VA and I just let's Or I mean, like I said, you don't have to be in the VA. You can take it directly to some brief copy and paste. All you do is you remove the, the IKOs of the airports and the runway uh, information from the string. And um, anyway, so it's probably better to just copy the internals, not the externals. So there you go. There you go. Set and star is included. Given. Yes, sir. You're broadcasting. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, no problem. Um, right, so there I have it. And then, like I say, you take it to some brief. At the end of the day, what you want is you want your some brief OFP to come back. We are lucky. There we have it. It's in the VA. It, it's part and parcel of the package you get there. Um, if you're not part of the VA, obviously, you, you'll, you can either download it or just read it you know, uh, online, but I'll show you quickly. So any in any event, I would recommend that you get the Simbrief downloader and that you set up all your exports. And what is very important for the Zebo mod nowadays to get your wind uploads is the XML data file. And it has to go into the same place as you put your FMS files. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to export it. We're going to close it. And what we're going to do is go find it. So that is our actual plan. Um, also, I export from Navigraph because that will include my SIDS and STARS. When you export from uh, Simbrief, you don't get SIDS and STARS with it, which that is that one. So I'll just delete the Simbrief version. There's the XML file. So I need to give it the same name as the FMS file. Oh, goodness. Didn't copy, I think. Paste. All right, so now my FMS and XML file, I've got the same name but different extensions, and I'll show you why a little bit later on. Um, and once that is in place, I think we can start setting up. So um, 
We've exported the flight plan. It's available to us. We've renamed the XML file. That's all stuff that you, you have to do before you actually get you know into the cockpit and start setting up and all these things because that's how you translate what you see over there into a usable B737 800X format for the Zebo mod so you can actually go fly it, all right? So that's it. That's that's my flight planning done. I'm going to close that one again. My next step is obviously going to be to go and start setting up the Zebo mod. Um, if you have a lot of time and if you want to simulate it, you can start your cleaning crew a little bit, let that run for a minute or so. And uh, I'll go put on my GPU. Open my doors, make sure that the doors are open. Let's see if I've got my ground services. Yeah, ground services are there. Right, so doors are done. Um, we can do our pre-planning of the pushback because we now know the runway that we're going to use. And in this instance, it's kind of obvious. You can't push no towards the other side, so you have to push that way. Round of cockpit, plan acknowledged. Call me through the menu when you are ready. All right, once we happy the cleaning is done, we can start the, the flight leg. So what will happen is the passengers will start to load in. Just want to lift my volume a little bit. All right, and then we can start setting up. So we're going to start with basics battery. That is our uh, ground power, and that's our emergency exits. Right, then what I want to do, and, and this is because my Alpha yoke is already set up on the uh, uh, the master batteries uh, and the avionics switches, uh, which I have mapped. It, it puts my lights in dim, so I just want to undim them. Right, and once we've done that, we can start setting up the other lights. Um, you don't have to set up the lights during the daytime. I just prefer to see better. So I just enable all the lights, make sure that they're there. Right, once the lights are done, it's easy enough to go and start the IRS. Depending on your EFB setting, uh, you can turn the knob there at the top to show you the amount of minutes. It says seven minutes for alignment now. Uh, it will uh, trickle down to zero and then give you your alignment. Um, but you can set it then and, and you can make it faster and so on in the EFB depending on your settings. Right. Then once you've got the two white lights over there and once your bus uh, is powered, you can actually do your 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 damper. Sasso, you still here? Are you busy? I am. Um, we had a, a brief discussion the other day about the hydraulic switches. Yes. All right. Uh, don't you want to quickly tell us, because I, in my checklist, always only switch them on later. And the reason I do it is because I don't have anybody walking around on the outside and doing those uh, checks yeah. on the outside. Um, Give us your, your take on it as a real pilot, please. Yes. Y y can you zoom in there? So we can show the people what is written above each pump. Because that will be quite interesting. Let me let me share it on on Discord for you as well. Oh yeah, perfect. Um uh, yeah. Yes, perfect. So as you can see, you have the two the outer one are related to the engine. And of course you have the low pressure light because the engine are off at the moment. So it, those one remain always on because the engine are off. They're off, they're off. There is no problem. The electric ones that are, um, let's say, connected, of course, with the electricity system. So with the electrical, in other words, when you go in and you put the ground power on, then they start to get some some life. Let's say, let's call this way to keep it simple. Now you have to be careful. Um, usually we put them on immediately as soon as the other pilot or we check with the ramp agent that the pin is installed in the nose wheel yeah, that's because the, yeah when when the pin is installed and this is because the uh, electric hydraulic pumps can start to pump the fu the, the hydraulic uh, fluid and this can move the nose wheel 
can, can give just a slam to the nose wheel. But if mm. the penis is tall, this will, to keep it simple, will isolate the nose wheel steering and the nose wheel axis. Yeah, it will the isolate air. it and it won't get the sudden jerk to hurt somebody standing exactly. next to it, yeah. But it's very important to have them on because if you think while the pilot flying is preparing the aircraft to fly the kind of FMC for the leg, then the other pilot is doing the walk around. So it's important to have them on because you can check, or the other pilot can check for any leak uh, before uh, you know starting the boarding or before starting the operation. So yeah, just check with the ramp agent, real life, check with the ramp agent if the pin is installed in nose wheel. And uh, that is the case, put the pumps on. Technically what also we do, we take the wheel well, which is bottom right, the wheel well light on is the light inside the gear, the main landing gear bay, that one, perfect. And in this way, we are nice to the, our colleague doing the walk around. He has lights, he has everything he needs or she needs to do the walk around. And that's it, really. And good. then you're good. Good, 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 good. I just wanted your input on it because um, I changed the title of the uh, stream to include the yep, words yep. Um, new pilot tips or tips for new pilots or something because um, it was a request this morning, strange enough. So um, I hope you guys enjoy Wonderful. it. Yeah. We'll, Perfect, we'll, yeah. we'll just slowly work through it and, and get everything done. Um, if you guys watch me stream you'll always see i fiddle over here and i just have a look at volts and amps i'm not sure if zebo has actually brought this in line with the real aircraft yet i haven't checked it okay but what is important for me is that i get volts and amps that there should be some display and the reason i do this for myself is i don't want to lose the practice of looking here once once i know what the real values are we'll be able to you know compare them have you ever compared them uh, Sasa? Uh, not really. No. Not we, really. We don't, we don't. no. It's not important kind of a thing. So don't worry um, too much about it at this time. But yeah. Except, yeah, exactly. Okay. But remember that if the voltage is correct, you yeah. get the ground power connected, the blue light will connect only if the um, amperage is good enough. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, if the voltage is good enough. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, yeah. the blue light is up. Yeah. No, 100%, 100%. All right. The next step that I do is I always go put on my um, uh, windshield uh, windshield heat and then the recirculation fan, just so that I don't forget. All right. And then what will happen, and the Zebo mod actually models it exactly like uh, the real aircraft. It will heat up the windows, and once it reaches the exact desired heat, it will switch them off, and it will go into a cycling mode. So you will sometimes look up, and you'll see that they're off. Sometimes they'll be on, and it's just because there's like this heating element that with the thermostat it heats them and you know kind of switches them on and off the way it needs to so remember that okay so this is in a nutshell this is the basics i do at the top all right give me one second <coughs> Okay. And this is what happens when you have a 13 year old daughter. She comes and she disturbs daddy when he's streaming. Sorry, guys, sorry, but it happens. Priorities, you know. Right, okay, so next step. Next step. Um, next step for me will be to actually load the aircraft, put the payload in. So I'm going to start showing you that as well 
Any questions so far? Anything you need to ask or say? Are you guys happy? I take it then. Right, okay. I'll zoom in a little bit for you. And to zoom in, all you do is, this is obviously a web page, so you hold in your control button and you scroll your mouse wheel and that's it. There you go. So, whether you got the OFP here from the VA, or whether you got it from some brief directly, I'll show you. There's the OFP from SimBrief directly. It's irrelevant. It all comes from SimBrief, the way it's been designed on our side. So I'm going to hide that and I'm going to bring the other one back up. Yeah. Right. Um, so this is your OFP. What is important for me, and I, I do this for, for giggles. I want to point this out to you. That's your time of observation of the weather. All right, so that weather was, the weather that's included in this OFP was observed at 400 Zulu. It is now 830 Zulu, so it's like four and a half hours later. So just bear it in mind. I always just point it out for giggles. Uh, still relevant to a certain extent and very unrelevant in an, another extent. It's, it's not for us to worry about that. All right, then, what I do is I go down to weights. Now again, if you set up and if you use the official SIBO template in uh, uh, SimBrief, all of these things should match and it could be that your zero fill weight would be out with maybe 100 kilograms or at least it would appear that way. And the reason is just it's rounding. SimBrief uses a different way of rounding than Zebo himself does. So, you know, it's just one of those things, but I'll, I'll show you if it happens. So what we need, we need the payload, 17.3. I'm going to go put 17.3, right? And we need the fuel, and the fuel, 7.1. Fuel is time available. So my suggestion tips for new pilot, Nico, as mm -hmm. you said, mm -hmm. especially when you are going into, as we did the other day, into EVAO, mm -hmm. exam, training, events, bring more fuel. Yes. Rough figure for the yes. 737, 200 kilograms, mm. 5 the air. Sorry, you broke up, say again, say again, you broke up. 200 200 kilograms yeah. equal to five minutes in the air. Yes. So when you have thunderstorm, when you have an EVAO exam, when you have training or big event, consider to load yes, at extra. least half an hour between 1.2 and 2 tons more than what you have in the OFP. Remember that the OFP, of course, doesn't take into account bad weather or event. So yes. if you are expecting this, bring more fuel. And we saw the other day, check the Nikos live stream, we had a wonderful event in uh, down in uh, South Africa. There was an exam and the more fuel was needed. So I added myself, I, I loaded 1.2 extra on top of the standard fuel. Sorry, just this was just a tip. That's a good tip. That's a really good tip. I mean, yeah, guys, we have a tradition in the Skymatics group, in the Zebo Pilots group, that we do the Rover Nami Christmas fly in every year. And just like when you do the training and the exam, like Sasso was talking, that's another very good example. Um, we bring an extra hour fuel at least an extra hour fuel because there is like hundreds of pilots flying that into Rover Naomi to go go see Christmas Father okay and at the end of the day they stack you they hold you my my last two years that I've now flown it um, my average hold time is 45 to 50 minutes that you have to hold you just sit there circling circling until it's your time to come down so that's a very good tip yeah. but for operational purposes, um, I'm showing you the insides of my uh, SimBrief live on stream. Sorry, Sasa, it's, it's not 
I can't stream it for you here on what's his name, but you'll see no, it. No, on, actually, on I'm his... following you on YouTube as well. Okay. The icon okay. following you on the computer so, as well. Yeah, so what is important when you set up your flights, and, and it comes back to both examples we've just spoken of, but this is more for op daily operational use. When when we use um, uh, the side bar over here, you can see that there is a contingency fuel that you can select. Now, uh, I don't know why it defaults to 5% 15 minutes. Mine is always, I manually set it to 5% 20 minutes. All right, that is your contingency fuel. And my reserve fuel, according to ICAO rules, is 30 minutes. And that 30 minutes means that at your alternate, you can circle for 30 minutes before you have to land. So, okay. yeah. mm, talk to me. Can I, can I spend a word on this? Yes. Because this is quite strange also the real one. Mm. If you look at the, do you have the OFP already? Yes. Okay. If you can um, screen the, the the final OFP, or it will be a step okay. later. No, no, there's the there's the final oh, OFP. Right. Perfect. If you scroll down, when there is final, when there is written the reserve, basically in the fuel section of the OFP. Okay, let's go okay, down. So, uh, it's just there what? when you have the alternate. Oh, final sorry, reserve. sorry. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, you're talking about at the top. You're talking about this one. Yes. Okay, got it. Exactly. Yes. So this is the bit that. The captain and first officer will will look at when starting the flight. So basically, as you can see, you have the three, so from A to B, the contingency, the alternate fuel, which is usually to the best option that the company give you, and then you have the final reserve, which is the 30 minutes that Nico is saying. But now just continue down with your eyes. See at the F, at the bottom FMC info final reserve plus alternate now what does it mean what's the difference because this is quite important because is you we need to put the right information in the fmc what you need to put in in the reserve um field in the fmc is going to be the one at the bottom which is 3681 so you run the tap always so it will be 3.7 you don't put the final reserve the third minute and this is for legality Okay, because then here we should talk about minimum fuel and mayday fuel, which is something else. But just for, to give you an information, what you put in the reserve into the FMC page will be the one at the bottom. Final reserve plus alternate. Because when you land at the alternate, in case you have to divert, you need to land at the alternate with still the 30 minutes fuel in the tank. That's the idea. You yes. never, if you land, with less than the final reserve, in other words, with less than 1104, which is the 30 minutes there at the top, then you are in an urgent situation. This is what they chaos. Yeah, sorry, you broke up. I just want to quickly say the words again. You are in an emergency situation, and it also means extra yeah. paperwork. You don't want to go there, promise you. And a nice meeting with coffee and biscuits, probably. Yeah, yeah, just this. All right, okay, okay. Tower says he wants to close, so um, I'm going to disconnect from Iveo just for a minute because he's obviously waiting for me. So I'll disconnect, he can do his thing. All right, so so coming back into the aircraft now, uh, I'm just going to scroll down just to remind you again. So payload is 17.3, that is in there. Okay, you will notice that I do not fiddle with anything in the middle there. You're, I'm talking about your passengers. Okay, all I do is I put 17.3, and the reason for that is Zebo wrote the code that it will take 17.3 and it will distribute it automatically. It is absolutely irrelevant, it is not linked in any shape, way, or form to the Simbrief OFP. It has got no relevance. The only thing that counts is this payload 17.3. All right. Now, if you follow my training checklist, which is in my vault, the links all over the place. It's it's below this, in the show notes as well. Y you'll notice and you'll see when I fly, I always change my cargo. All right, and the reason I do this is if you go to your CG envelope, the Zebo mod physically actually simulates the change in CG with fuel 
burn. This is not just a value on a screen like some other simulations do. It's not a bluff. It's not a trick. This is, it actually happens. The CG changes in the Zebo mod. So once you've calculated your FMC properly, you've set it up, you'll get a landing weight CG here as well. Give me one second. Daughter is back. She just said, said goodbye. They're going to go to the shops now. Okay, so coming back. The FMC, once it's done, you'll have the landing mate CG. Then if you have an imaginary line at the middle somewhere there, you'll see sometimes it's to the left, which means nose is heavy, or sometimes to the back, which means tail is heavy. And there is a whole explanation in the uh, training checklist why I change it, because by default, the way Zebo sets it up, it gives you a more stable takeoff CG compared to a landing CG. I prefer to have a more stable landing CG. All right. So what I typically do is your your scale is between 20 and 23 percent, and the the middle point of that is 21.5. So all I try and do is I try and put it in the middle. Um, I'm not going to do it today i'm just going to leave it at, at something more in depth for another day but it's in the training checklist all right so at this point we're done with our loading all right let's see what gear says all right yes no problem enjoy uh, i hope it's a good interruption and not a bad one uh, strongs man enjoy sasso yes yes correct I, I noticed what you typed me. Okay, yeah, no, that's yeah. that's perfect. I don't have a problem with that. So, uh, okay, hang on a second. I think I know what you mean. For the uh, people, yeah. Makes for the people, the block fuel because that's that's so called the block fuel. That means the standard fuel suggested by the OPT because remember, it's always suggested. It is a seven one three. Yes. So in the ideal world, what we do, wonderful weather here and at destination, no delay expected, no turbulence uh, forecast during our cruise, we technically we can go standard fuel. Standard fuel means we take what DFP uh, suggests to us. So in this way, you always run the DAP, 7136, the fuel will be 7.2. Mm. Now, here, of course, the fuel will be precise, so exactly 7.2. In reality, when you pass the information to the fueler guy, 7.2 reality will become 7.2 plus something in 10, mm -hmm. just because we are human, okay? Mm -hmm. If there is, let's imagine we are going to our destination, there will be a wonderful about training session or expected bad weather, okay? In this case, I would say as a pilot, maybe we can expect a bit of delay, so I don't want to go with the standard fuel. I will go, I will carry extra fuel. So in this case, I will say, okay, maybe 30 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. Roughly 20 minutes is 800 kilograms. 30 minutes is 1.2. So in this case, if I want to load 30 minutes of holding fuel for possible delay, I will do 7.2 plus 1.2, 8.4 will be my new fuel. And that will go under peak extra. Yes. Pilot man extra fuel. Yeah. This will be the, the sequence. Good. Okay. That's perfect. All right. So uh, I accept that we are now done with our payloads and all those things. And the next step, we've already put the power. We've done most of what we need to do. I'm just going to continue just for my own sake to get the ambience correct in there but just get some light on the subject and that's just me you don't have to do it if you don't want to do it i just like it so all right so that takes care of basics our next step is going to be our fmc but before we go there i want to show the new guys this if you have not seen it if we go to d-link aoc and we go to requests we can actually request weather from the Zebo, so we can go out the FM, right? And then we send it off. Uh, remember I showed you earlier to check the weather that was using X Enviro. If you don't have a tool like that, then obviously, there you go. You click on message and there is your actual uh, meter 
of this airport so you can read it over here and what is important for me at this point in time is 1020 and uh, we can't see everything there so we're going to go through runway 36 is 020 at 15 knots it's next page I guess yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I found it. So yeah, um, this is a nice way during the flight to actually check your meat out of your destination and things like that. Guys, it's vitally important. I know there are nice tools for the real world and things like that, but you cannot use real world weather inside the sim it's a different world totally different world it's like saying let's use mars weather for earth weather it just doesn't work unless you can see and this is where you check it that it says ltfm and it then says it's the fourth day of the month and it gives you the zulu time if your real world meter and this meter does not meet the same time it's not the same then you can't use the real world so please just don't make a fuss about it um you know you're going to get run into people that's going to get angry at you if you use the wrong runway because you use the wrong weather and things like that so don't do that all right so let's go to the fmc our first priority would be to put the position in all right we always go to the next page we always take the gps left well usually all right the other one gps right is obviously standby um, you don't have to fill in anything here. Yeah, there's no rule that says you have to do it. In actual fact, let me give you the golden Boeing rule. A dashed line is a nice to have a block that we had just now. A block is mandatory. All right, so always remember that. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go LTFM and uh, where's LTAI? I'm going to import my route. Going to add my call sign and I'm going to activate this. Right. Departure arrival, I am definitely going to check and I'm going to check this against my Navigraph. Let me just reset this view quickly. Right, so we have LTFM runway 36, uh, RATV for Echo. So let's make sure we've got the right one. There's 36. RATV for Echo, there's no transition, so we're happy with that. Arrival. Need to go over. Uh, BAS, S, what? BABS? You know, BABS, one Delta, and IL is Zulu 18 Tolly. So this IL is Zulu 18 Tolly. Babs one delta. Okay, and now we're not going to use a transition. We went to final. You see, it's written final. We are not going to use that teardrop effect there or whatever they had in mind. We're going to go on uh, the star and then just turn back. All right, so now we can go to our legs page and step through. Very important, always, always step through. Sometimes I know even I don't pay pretty much attention and then I, it bites me, but this is the place where it is going to bite you. So while we still remember it's 1020, let's set our uh, altitude there, uh, the barrow. And I'm going to go to the plan mode and we're going to step through. And what is important is that the flow is one direction. If all of a sudden you see this thing jump backwards, then you know you've got a problem. Or if there's discontinuities, things like that. So what we're going to do is just work through everything like this. See, that takes us back there. We're going to vector ourselves around. So what I'll typically do is once I get somewhere over here, I will already... Uh, probably somewhere there, right? Um, I will already put the next waypoint, but not execute it. So that one will be ready and waiting. And once we pass the last waypoint, I will execute that one to be the one at the top. Uh, the LNAV will turn us around and bring us into land. As easy as that. The blue dotted line there, that's cyan, that's the go around procedure. We're not going to worry about that right now. And then we can go to root, set everything back to normal. Okay, so from pressing RTE, we go to uh, our preference in it page. There's it. 
zero fill weight we just double click and let's bring up our OFP again right so what is important for us right now is to check that we have the same zero fill weight zero fill weight 60.4 Zero fuel weight is 60.4. Now, what is important over here, our takeoff weight is 67.5, and there you'll see 67.5. What, what is interesting in this example is there's not much taxi fuel. Now, if you look at the, the layout of where we are and where the runway is, I mean, <laughs> it's literally like 100 meters or so maybe a little bit more but I mean there's not going to be much taxi fuel so what will typically happen is uh, you'll see your gross weight will be like 100 or 200 kilograms more and that's just the taxi fuel that's allowed you know extra so bear that in mind All right then coming back to what Sasso was talking about I just want to reset this no 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 I don't want to just want to keep it on screen so you guys can see it right so it now asks for the reserves and this is what Sasser and I highlighted for you. So Finres plus Alton is Reinhardt. Reinhardt. Sorry, guys. Um, so Finres plus Alternate is 3681. So we're going to make it 37. All right. 3.7. All right. So that's our reserves. Our cost index, obviously, something you determine before. And in in the Skymatics company, we fly a CI of 20 unless we, you know, have a reason not to. So that's our default. So we put the 20 cost index over here. Very important, especially um, uh, for step climb purposes, is you need to check if there are any step climbs and what your final altitude would be. So we're going to fly at 350 today. There's no steps and it's just is what it is. All right. So, so you're still here? Yes, sir. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to mention something and then you can counter the real world argument. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you don't mind. Okay. So when, yeah. Usually when I do training, especially with the new pilots, okay, I try and make it easy and I don't see a problem with it unless you, of course, convert me today. All right, so a lot's hanging in here. But what you, what you can see on the OFP, and this is where the controversy comes in, it shows you the average wind at top of climb. A 280 mm -hmm. at 35 okay now, now i heard you say the other day but it's logical that that's the top of climb wind you need to go find it here so if we scroll down there's top of climb and you'll see it's 282 at 54 okay which one do you use in the real world do you actually scroll down do you come here is this the one that you take nope which one uh, how do you get have, those winds play out, play out or if you go at the top uh -huh. uh, at the top there, uh, our layout of uh, flight plan will they will be the top of climb average wind as well. Okay. So, let's, so I see there at the moment. I can see only the average. It's two eighty at thirty five. Uh, but that's the average in the route, yes. not in the top of climb. Okay, so that's so the total route. Okay. Yeah. Etc. Um, Initially, in the performance page, mm -hmm. the old days we used to put the top of climb, mm -hmm. and then once you reach the top of climb, you go into the legs page, a root data, and you change the wing at the first available waypoint. And this mm -hmm. will change the wind also in all the others. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, in reality, we have we did this OFP 30 minutes ago. Mm -hmm. In reality when you do your flight the real world the flight plan has been done six hours early well look so, at this look at this is why i pointed out you see the the observed winds okay exactly. the weather model was run at 4 a.m that's four and a half hours ago that the winds model exactly. was run so so this is my argument sasa if you'll bear with me is yeah. i i don't care if you use that one or if you use the top of climb wind over here i know there are certain people that are absolutely pedantic about it they will you know fight you for you know not you know, using this the mm -hmm. thing is uh, aviation 
is not a game like I'm a magician, I can predict exactly second when I will reach the top of crime. All we are doing with this um, business of the top of crime wind and stuff like this is predict the fuel burning time. Mm. We are talking about kilograms, no yeah. hundred of kilograms, and the seconds when we will reach our top of crime. Mm. Who cares? Yes. Are we going to crash? No, you're not. You see, there's no oh. danger. There's no... And, exactly. ag and again, coming back to Mr. Boeing's philosophy, okay? That's a dashed line. It is, exactly. It's not a block which is mandatory. No right? mandatory. Yeah. Okay, so the reason I went into this discussion is because I know there are some pedantic people out there that they will fight you for it. And when I, try, I train the people and I train many people, I always just say, use that and get it over with it's there if you really want to scroll down go find the top of climb winds it's 282 54 versus uh, what, what i can tell you yeah what i can tell you from a real perspective yeah i don't care too much about this yes. because easy the fmc flying the aircraft or is the pilot flying the aircraft mm. this is the main question now i know Yali, you will never fly Remember when I use the word ideal word, okay? Mm, mm. We try to be as precise as possible because we think we are in the ideal world. So the FMC is always predicting the ideal aviation world. Mm, it's mm. never going to happen. Okay, yeah, as soon yeah. as you take off, ADT is going to call you and say, Schematics 1, okay, take this heading. I need you to vector you for traffic. Continue climb or uh, increase your rate of climb, reduce your rate of climb, but you need to step you even if you have no step climb because there mm. is traffic above or below you. So, you know, all this information go out of the window as soon as you are able in well, real world. You see why I'm having that's, this that's discussion with you. Yes, exactly. exactly. But this is, this is why I'm having the discussion with you because this is the way grown-ups do it, not, you know, yeah. these people throwing stones that's in the rocks idea. and things. So, if, yeah. If I do the takeoff and I have clouds in front of me, I, I don't care if there is as climb speed to 80. Maybe mm. I want to go prevent to reduce the speed to have a better rate of climb because I want to clear that clouds in front of me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, term is you flying the aircraft, not mm. vice versa, not the FMC mm. flying the aircraft. That's, that's the idea. Correct. Or Correct. my way of doing the stuff that maybe I'm wrong, but, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I think we, we, we get the picture that it's not an exact science. And to have something is better than nothing, um, but we're not going to slit our wrists because it's not perfect. You know, the just... FMC is the ideal aviation world. Yeah. Reality. So you want to have the FMC ready to help you? The FMC will be there ready to help you yes. with as much as information as possible, but then real world is something different and mm. you can simulate this if you have evao mm. you are in the middle of a training section man the fmc will tell you something and then you are going to fly something else mm. and mm. then the air mission change the fmc to have right at the right time because mm. it's you flying the aircraft not the well, we, we had it in the training session, and you can see that in my video here of the other day in South Africa, where I was cleared down or told to go down to 4,000 foot. The FMC stopped me at 5,000. I didn't realize it because oh, yeah. I wasn't paying attention, you see. So yeah. I had to, I think I used level change eventually to go down to four, and then the ATC realized it's too low and he put me back on five. You know what I'm saying? So it happens. Yeah. Okay. Good. Next one, and then we're done with this page. The next, oh, sorry, there's two more things. Um, the next thing is your average ISA. Um, I just put that in there as well. It, it's about convenience. Again, fill in the blank. So there we go. There's your average ISA. It's 11. You put it in. The outside air temperature will be calculated for you. Now, if you use an application like Active Sky, it doesn't give you the average ISA. It actually gives you the outside air temperature. So all you do is you put it in the bottom then, and the Zebo will calculate the ISA definition, uh, the number, deviation yeah. for you. Okay. Now, Nico, after mm. you execute this page, I want mm. to show you something. All right, but before after we do that, execute. before we do yeah. that, I want to show the guys one more thing. Um, Zebo tried to make it really easy for people, all right, and he he's obviously reading certain data from 
available information. As you can see there, this is our departure, the SID, and it says their transition altitude is 12,000, and there you can see it's 12,000. Okay, um, without naming names, there are other 738s out there that doesn't do it the same way. So when you fly any 738, please make sure you've got the correct transition altitude because that value will determine when your PFD goes yellow and prompts you to go to standard atmosphere or come back from standard atmosphere is on the other page but just as a matter of thing, just, just check that it is it is something that is, is sometimes different to what the aircraft expects and then if you want to fly more precisely um, you have to get the information there and then we execute and we're done with this page okay there's one more thing i want to mention here um it doesn't happen often but when it does if you fly on a long route and let's say you've got like 12 or 15 tons or if you take shortcuts and you don't do the programming of the fmc in the the sequence that i do what happens is sometimes you get very strange values here when you click on your zero fuel weight and the reason for that is you too fast the the fuel is still loading so while the fuel is still loading and you are not on your correct fuel level uh, you need to put your uh, block fuel value in here so that you can continue the programming of the fmc otherwise you're going to have to come back and redo the zero fuel weight and the cruise weight uh, situation okay so just bear that in mind that's a a quick tip do not execute this page do not complete this page until you have the correct fuel value and the only way to get the correct fuel value if it's still fueling is to put your actual plan fuel the block fuel in there okay just bear that in mind and remember after the fuel is please delete the plan fuel otherwise ah. the information in the prop page will come not for the from the actual fuel but from the plan fuel and you don't want that okay that's good i didn't know that sasa you've yes. taught me something today thank you yes. that's good good to know because i, I, I what, don't um, ever delete what it. i was um, uh, saying before nico uh, so we put uh, cruise winds 280 at 35 right? yes mm. so now nico if you're going to let like, if you don't mind that's fine and, the and then you go into root data now look then the climb this is just the beginning okay look at the wind there is no wind look the wind start at noon because the fmc calculated that the first way the first available waypoint where the aircraft will be at the cruise level which is i think three five i saw there yes. three five zero will be noon you see but at the end is is technically not using that wind for the climb and not yes. even for the descent but then we will show you what to do with the wind for the descent yeah well, so you see that's that's also the answer to that uh, to that question earlier yes yes you see now let me put this up if you if you want to okay this is the wind information obviously there is numti there is numti you see now according to the aircraft numti is already in the cruise but according to the ofp we only reach the top of climb after numti so you've got that discrepancy as well okay um but i mean theoretically you can now come and you can come and sit here and you can enter per sorry not that one per waypoint you can enter the values you know to to change that so if we look at numti that's 283 at 54 okay so i say so a good rule of thumb if it's more than 10 degrees or 10 knots you can change it if it's less than yeah, that it's, it's irrelevant what, yes. what i personally do when i do mm. now this flight was an hour maybe an hour and mm. 10 an hour and 15 yes, 10, it's, yeah. it's easy good very very relevant fuel really well, yeah. when I do flight more than three hours, okay, then what I do personally also to fill a bit the time, when I reach the top of climb, I take out my OFT and I say, there is another page. So if you continue to scroll, you have a page when you have all the wing at different level for each waypoint. To oh, be yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm going in the wrong place. Let me just get back there. Yeah. Um, there it is. There is your wind information. Exactly. So when you have a long flight, 
uh, for instance, when I do the Canaries Island or I do Morocco or stuff like this, when the trip is more than three, three, more than three hours, then what I do as soon as I reach the top of the climb, I go into legs, root data, and as you can see here, num t doku betekto, that's it. So he's consider the FMC is calculating to remain in cruise mode only for those three uh, waypoints, then to start the descent. But in a, during a long flight, you have, of course, more waypoints. So in that case, I will just take this page, the wind information page, take the level time considering to fly, so in this case, 350, and then put the wind for every, you know, three or four waypoints, I put the wind if he's changing in a re relevant way. That's what to do. But this is only to have a better... Um, how can I say, a more precise landing time and a more precise fuel at arrival, you're not really going to crash. I mean, yeah. Uh, if, uh, if uh, changing the wind at a waypoint will make your fuel prediction land good or bad in terms of emergency or not emergency, then you did some mistake on the ground. That's for sure. That's, that's the idea. Yeah. Because just a bit of wind is not pain. That's the safety margin are there in place subtly to avoid this problem because we are not in an ideal world the wind will change yeah so Great. That's, that's the thing that's it I, i'm just changing it just to show the guys how it works all right so yeah. i've just changed two of them um very importantly do not change them from the bottom up because the moment you do one higher up it changes all of them to the bottom okay so just do them yeah. from top down please Okay, so that takes care of that. Let's go back to with init page so we don't lose our track. All right, so this is done. Now we go in one limit. All right, if you have a calculator and you can calculate these things, uh, you can mess around with this. Otherwise, just leave it. Okay, if you're new, I'm talking to the new guys. Obviously, you can derate on the templates. You know, and you can uh, let me explain what this does. This will give you a, a slower run on the runway in layman's terms. Okay, so it will have less thrust, so it will take longer to get in the air when you change this one, and this will uh, decrease your climb rate. So, if you flying from uh, Stan State, for instance, any of these southern uh, British airports where they keep you at 6,000 foot for a long time, I always go for climb two because I don't want to be a rocket. There's no point in me climbing to 6,000 foot within 30 seconds and then sitting there for half an hour. So, what I do is I put in climb two, I climb slowly and steadily, and everybody in the back loves me because I don't pop their ears and give them a scare to climb like a rocket. You understand? So that's the climb situation. This is your thrust situation. And like I say, if you have a, a calculator and you can actually calculate the SEL temperature, you know, you can manipulate them a little bit more. But in, in most cases, flight swimmers don't have the calculator or, you know, don't care about it. So it's easy enough to use templates, you know, the T rates. You just that. Anything you want to add there, sir, sir? No, this is um, four-month stuff, so, yeah. yeah. All right, then take off. Normally, we do flaps five take off. If you have a performance calculator and you tell it to calculate your optimum take off, uh, you sometimes get the flaps one take off and you get like a D-rate to engine and uh, it, it gives different things, but... For us, we usually take flaps 5 or flaps 10. Um, it's seldom you do flaps 15 or 25 take off in a, in a Boeing, eh, eh Sasa? So, so? I did once. Flap, once, yeah. Uh, mm. Seldom. It was flap 25, if I remember. Mm -hmm. uh, we were very performance limited on an odd day, and uh, we did um, flaps 25 take off, no problem at all. Mm -hmm. But we have our performance calculator books. You do, you don't just play with the flaps. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you do performance with safety margin, all those funny mm -hmm. stuff. But the the key point here is it happens seldom. It's not something that you do every day. It's you're not no, going exactly. to you're not going to fly in and out of Southampton doing flaps twenty five. It's not going to happen. No. not in real world. You know that's that's where you do other things. Other things. Okay. Good, so we've yeah. entered the flaps, we have entered the CG, all right, uh, we're going to go back to that graph just now, I want to show you what the, the significance is that we spoke about earlier, there is our suggested trim that we need to set, and 
then we've got our V speeds. All right, for the new guys, if you are not familiar with it, it's going to delete the V-speeds when I fiddle with this now, but you can set your runway conditions to dry, wet, or snow, um, just by going to the next page, okay? You can also set your cutback over here for your noise abatement, and you see there it will limit your engine thrust to 83.8 percent after takeoff at uh, 1000 foot and it will restore it at 3000 foot so this is this is uh, stuff that i sometimes use all right i don't care for that stuff anymore sel has uh, your assumed temperature that sel one has basically taken away the need to do these things on the left you don't care about that anymore okay so that's it. Um, let's go back to that graph quickly and let me show you the CG thing we were talking about. So if we go over yeah, now you'll see your landing uh, weight the CG is 19.1 so it's a little bit nose heavy, it's to the front and now, I mean, you don't have to do this. It's perfectly normal. You can land your Zebo mod just like this. Uh, all I do is I go and I take 500 kilograms from the front and I shove it into the back. So I end up with 503 in front and uh, 1866 in the back. And there you can see it's 21.8. So remember I said the scale is from 20 to 23. And the ideal one would obviously then be in the middle, which is 21.5. So that's perfect for me. I'm happy. And that's how I fly. This step, this last step about the landing weight CG, don't break your head over it. Don't kill yourself. Don't go crazy about it. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. It's it's just me. Okay. And that's it. That's, that's basic, basically it. So now we can tell Linda to do our trim for us. Trim up. If you don't have a Linda and you don't use her for the trim, obviously just make sure that you set your trim uh, correctly. And again, we're talking normal operation. We're not talking winter ops and things like that. Yeah, uh, Tommy, thank you. Thanks for that. Yeah, um, that was that was the uh, chat in the chat room yeah where everybody's sitting this morning is you know we need a refresher we need to do this again and so on and so forth so i just decided why not and i'm i'm blessed to have sasso here with me thank you sasso for helping pleasure pleasure to me all right okay so the next step is going to be to set up our mcp all right so we're gonna go on the fds and the auto throttle I do it from this side because I'm sitting pilot flying is on the left. If you're sitting on that side, you will arm your uh, FD first on that side and then uh, this one. And you see that light will tell you which one is the master. Okay. So what we need to do. Oops, and I've taken away that page. Um, Nico. Yeah. Um, regarding the MCP, or better, a step before when you show the mm. takeoff page two, yeah. uh, maybe regarding the acceleration height, uh, do we need to say something about noise one departure or noise two departure? You know, you know what? Go for it. They, they tell them. Okay. Tell them. So, in this page, let's start the rule. There are some airports that. Uh, are noise two departure, which is the kind of standard departure, and noise two noise abutment departure procedure number two means that you will bug up. In other words, you will start cleaning up the aircraft from the flaps after departure at 1,000 feet AGL. Instead, there are other reports that depends for noise or geographical position or something else that will dictate a noise abutment procedure number one. In that case, you will bug up at 3000 TGL. Now, if you are using VNAV for departure, this page, takeoff reference page two, is the one you need to set up correctly looking at your noise abutment procedure. Because if uh, VNAV is engaged, then it will accelerate or reduce the thrust 
were at the right. So it really depends. If you're flying with the level change, as uh, my company does, then you do the manually bug up. So you manually go there with your finger and bug up the P at the, at the right time. But if you're using VNAV, you need, you need that. So it just depends. Okay, uh, you can keep 1000 AGL or 1000 AGL. Yeah, Let, let's just keep it simple, okay? I've enabled the yeah. cutback, okay? I've enabled the exactly. cutback. So the guys will see that we're going to get Toga and they will see how that little green bug then actually drops down. You see it's currently at 95.3. It will then drop yeah. down to 83.8 and we'll show them how it works. How that? Yes. Okay, so, so that's done. Oops, so now I take away that page again. All right, so what we need to do now is we need to go set our V2 speed at 148. Okay, in the real aircraft, and I, I believe the Zebo is actually modeled that way, it's not a requirement to set that. The moment you press Toga, it's supposed to do its own calculation and put the correct speed in. But I think it's good airmanship to actually go put in the value. Okay, With, when you do the level change takeoff that Sasa was just talking about, I was taught that you have to add the 20. So it's it's V2 plus 20 that you add in there. And you'll see when you actually engage your command A at, you know, whatever altitude you do, it will add extra value in there as well. It will increase that value. Hey, Sasa? Um, so you keep there, the MC, you keep V2. Okay. Because if you have an emergency, you know, in case of an engine out procedure, you need mm -hmm. to fly, if your speed is below V2, you need to fly V2, which is the ah. safe margin. Okay. If you are above V2, then you can fly plus, more than V2 or V2, but never less than V2. Yeah, In okay. the MCP, you will have V2 there. All right, okay. No, that's yeah. fine. That's clarified it a bit. So we're going to keep it at V2. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to go check our... Whoops, almost pressed the wrong button here. Yeah. We need to go and check the runway heading. So we're taking runway 36, and then you can see 354. Nico, sorry, and uh, everybody else, uh, I have to go. Um, so, yeah, well, I will see you... Probably this afternoon, I don't know. I just have a bit of relaxed day here with the family. Okay. Enjoy Sasa and thank you so much for yeah. what you did this morning. Pleasure. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. 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 All right. Well, I'm not going to stop just because he's gone. I'm going to continue and then, um, you know, we, we take it from there. It's just nice to have his real world perspective here. So, one of those things. Right. Um, in terms of altitude, if we fly with ATC in your clearance, you will be given an initial altitude. If you are not flying with ATC and I don't feel like connecting back there, that guy said he's closing the tower, so he's probably gone. I'm simply going to put my cruise altitude in there. Right, I'm not even going to mess around. The Zebo mod, as with the real aircraft, is intelligent enough. It will honor your um, speed as well as altitude restrictions. All the way up to cruise and all the way back down to landing. So we, we're not going to simulate, or we don't have to simulate, you know, climbing up and down and stopping and doing things in the middle. Okay. Now, let's quickly save put that back um, right then what I'm gonna do is enable the RTO that's our rejected takeoff um, in a Boeing we do not use the speed brake we don't arm it before takeoff like we do with uh, an Airbus we put it in RTO and the moment we reject the takeoff it that RTO mode automatically deploys the speed brake and hits the maximum auto brake and all those other things for us so we don't we don't have to do anything else, that's it. Okay, then there is another thing that I like to teach the new users, the new new pilots, and that is once you are in this position, you can see the IRS is aligned. You can double check at the top. You can see it is aligned, there's no more notifications. You see your standard display there. Uh, we can go back one 
I've just turned it back one notch and there you can see the wind currently displayed for us so that's just me I'm checking things and then this is it what I say to the guys and this is relevant for your IKO kind of countries IKO type of departures where you've actually got a SID that's connected to your runway um, in the US for instance there are a lot of times that you cannot do this okay so there's a different procedure but we're currently in Europe so I'm talking about the IKO way of doing things what I do is I arm the VNAV and the LNAV and the reason I do that so that I can see my lights are on is an error check it it tells me if those two lights do not come on it tells me that I did something wrong and the question then becomes what did I do wrong okay so you either have a problem in the fmc where you put incorrect values or you did not execute one of your pages or oops mouse is stuck what could happen is you forgot to switch on the uh, fly director on the other side so again remember this is master and sometimes what happens when you're in a hurry you see it will not uh, arm until you have everything set up correctly so for me this is a test you don't have to do it it's not an SOP of any kinds that I can force you to, to go through but if you sit at this point in time no engines running you, you don't even have your APU running if you want to know that you will not have a problem once you take off all you do is set it up correctly and then hit those two buttons if those two green lights come on you know that you've programmed the FMC correctly and the MCP is set up correctly. As easy as that. Okay. And then from here on, we can start the APU. Okay, and now it's just a formality. Now we can actually put the seat belts on. Um, we've got the, the passengers loaded already, so that's fine. What we want to do is start closing the doors and we want to get a bit of pushback i've already done the planning you saw that earlier so i'm just going to request it all right i'll leave it on this page for now and then obviously because i use the ground handling i just need to tell them to re um, retreat now to drive away that's it we're basically ready to go I'm just looking at the map here, look at this. All the guys that started with me are busy landing and some of them have already landed. I hope you guys had some fun this morning. I hope you can use this as a reference material to just get uh, yourself going. Uh, Christian, um, I hope you followed, buddy. I hope it's got some value for you. All doors and hatches are closed, ready to connect. Right, once we have the APU on the bus, we can actually get rid of the GPU. And um, for those of you that know me, I always go to my Avitab and there's my map and now I'm happy. Right. Before start procedure. Before start procedure. Thank you, Linda. So connected and bypass pin inserted. Release parking brake. You go. Starting pushback and you may start engines. Yes, it is. It's in Before there, Olaf. Procedure complete. As far as I know, um, I haven't looked at it recently, checklist. but that is how I've been training the pilots for a long time. Robert, thank you. All right, so start engine number two. Oh. Start number two engine. Did not like that command. Starting number two engine.
what you guys must do um, I don't know a lot of you guys personally uh, so I'm just generalizing please forgive me I, I don't offend anybody but if you if you have questions come to discord eh? I mean we are here most of the time we literally live on discord when we can most guys are here every day so if you need assistance if you need to ask questions if you want more training come to discord we can't help you on facebook it's it is tremendously impossible it, it can't be done in text form you know no forum no facebook nothing can give you this kind of training and we continuously help guys here behind the scenes and i don't want you guys to to feel intimidated or embarrassed okay i don't care what level of proficiency you have if you need help come here we'll help you here okay um obviously we need to come to an arrangement of a certain time you know um to do that but other than that i mean there's always almost somebody here that can give you some tips operation complete set parking brake Let's have a look. Start number one engine. Starting number one engine. Sail. Hello, Rab. I I thought my mic was muted there, but it wasn't. No, it's fine. We'll try you with a tomato later, don't worry. You know. <laughs> That's fine, Muddy. Don't let it worry you. Twenty-five and two. So is disconnected and bypass pin has been removed. Hand signal will be on the left. We'll see you next time. Have a safe flight. Starter cut out. Engine start procedure complete. All right. Okay, we'll get that engine on the bus just now. Let's just get up and from this gentleman. Right. That is done. That's done. All right. So we've got the engines on the bus. Um, and then I think the I, I know I don't always do it this way and please forgive me you know, take shortcuts sometimes but there is two things that you generally shouldn't do okay so you can either start here at the top or you can start here and then work your way down and then come back to the top but let's start like make it easy so first of all we want the probes on now in the new generation uh, aircraft and the Zebo also simulates this this is an option in the oh, EFB oh, no. No, um, still on the deck. Yeah, shout in my ears. Thank you. Oh. Sorry, sir. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I'm I'm pushing now. I've just pushed, Uncle John. Okay. Just get worried about you. That's all. No, no, no. We had a good session. I want to tell you that we had a good one. Yeah, I realised Sasso was there. Yeah. Okay. So coming back to the training, um, this is an option in the EFB. Uh, you can set your probes to auto or not, um, in which case these lights will be on until such time as you, you switch it on. Uh, in our case, it is uh, an, on the auto option, so the lights were off, it was already switched on for us. But because lives depend on this, this is literally a, a life saving or taking feature okay it's it's advisable to always even if it's on auto make sure that they are on because you will die if that thing does not work and you missed it okay so make sure that thing works then what i do is i put the air conditioner on our pressurization system runs okay and this is the important bit that i alluded to earlier okay always switch off that uh, isolation valve first before you switch off the APU okay uh, the APU will last longer it's just a better way of doing it so you start there then go there another thing I just want to show you it's probably not gonna do it now yes it does okay it does 
there is a mechanical link behind this panel that connects the engine bleed to the APU bleed over there okay uh, sorry I said isolation of I meant the bleeds I beg your pardon uh, don't want to confuse you just a slip of the tongue so the it, the bleeds are connected physically you can see there's a line if you do not switch off the APU bleed uh, there it warns you deal bleed is on what will happen is the moment you put thrust through your engine the moment you move your thrust levers forward it's going to put pressure on your APU and it can blow it it can physically destroy it so you have to make sure that your APU bleed is off in the simulator it's not simulated but one day maybe when Zebo has a few minutes he can actually put the explosion at the back end there you know you'll just hear bang and see some flames so please remember APU bleed must be off so that light goes out before you actually taxi and then we're now going to switch it off that's it okay so we're ready our next step is now flaps five and we want to check our controls see that they are free and clear and they all respond to us and happiness is all right in the zebo this is an option in the efb you can actually switch on your camera and you can taxi procedure. have a look Flat around see that you know everything is to your liking there are a couple of nice to have things that you can do okay so that's it we are ready to go oh, are you a lone pilot now yes well i've got six aircraft here all lined up that's fantastic sir you enjoy there's a seventh one coming in just now coming over the mountains there by you i, I don't know Thank who you. that is and Can then I'll, I'll be there in now. about an hour you don't have to wait for me i will you know i'll wait for you okay cool Enjoy right. your flight. Thank you, sir. Yeah, we'll wait. We'll enjoy the stream. Okay, cool. Oh, that was a performance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm glad I made two cups of coffee, Reggie. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, Just I, need, I needed one them, one I think. Else. <laughs> um, I've got a question for you. Um, Shoot. Um, the question is related to the engine start. Do you always start engine one before engine two? No. Because, uh, always no. No, number two first. Number two first. Okay. Yes. Why the, is that? Okay. Uh, a couple of the systems, and uh, please don't ask me which ones, I can't remember. Um, but if you read the actual uh, FCOM, they tell you that there are certain systems that you need to have running. So even if you don't start engine number two always first you the first thing in the morning when you start your first flight that has to be engine number two because that is uh, uh, linked to whatever these systems are and you need to make sure that these systems work okay then the rest of the day you can use number one if you want to there's another rule or a rule of thumb or a suggestion what the guys in the real world do and this also differs between operators okay delta for instance like you to start number one first obviously after starting number two first in the first flight what they say is when you push back the engine the furthest from the terminal is the one that you start first so if you push back with your tail to the left it's engine number two that's the furthest from your terminal so it's out of people's way out of arms way okay but if you push your tail to the right it means engine number one is the furthest from the terminal okay so it would depend on your sop your airline um the operations on the ground whatever okay but in general the fcom says start engine number two first for your first flight in the day okay thank you thank you nika no problem right so here we are i'm going to quickly talk you through this we are holding short of the runway i'm going to use my weather radar in fact because of those mountains i'm going to use the weather radar on that side and i'm going to use the terrain on this side 
Yes, Finn. Thank you. Yeah, they do. They do. All right. So, weather radar, that side we said, uh, terrain radar this side, because we need to navigate through those mountains to be safe. Then, as a matter of interest, the weather radar runs from the radar that's on board. Okay, so it's actively scanning. Your terrain radar does not scan. This is why you will see that um, it runs off a database and you'll see some of the pilots will actually activate it while at the gate already. Nobody's going to be burnt if they walk in front of the aircraft when the ground radar is on just some useless information just to tell it. It comes from a database. It does not actively scan. All right, whereas the radar on the weather side, it actually scans and you can hurt somebody if they walk in front of that aircraft and stay there too long. Okay. Um, these little values is your peaks and your valleys all right and you need to just pay attention to that it will basically tell you you know how far the ground is from you kind of a thing okay then we need to have our TCAS on we need to squawk charlie so that the air traffic control actually picks up that the transponder is alive thank you peter much appreciated sir really really appreciated um then, uh, so it says there, traffic only, uh, TA only is on. We've got it on TARA, which is the furthest it can go. So once we are in the air, it will then go from just the traffic um, reporting to also the advisory, where it will tell you your resolution. TARA is traffic advisory and resolution advisory. So it will change the mode automatically. We'll be happy when that happens. Okay. Oh, dear. Right, then we need to make sure we've got the correct flaps. We're on flaps 5, RTO is on. We need to make sure seatbelts on. Um, we're going to ask Linda. Before takeoff procedure. Before takeoff procedure. Right, she's going to just quickly also double check everything and make sure that everything is okay. In the Zebo mod, we also have a facility to just effect that make sure all the lights are in place thank you linda and that's it we're ready, ready to go so checklist. the one thing i want you to look at there's two things you need to look at actually hell no there's mo there's plenty more i'm talking nonsense disregard first of all let's start from the beginning okay you'll see there you've got your v speeds on the tape on the left and you'll see them come up those are your flap speeds and your obviously v speeds now to take off hello dogan um sorry you'll have to type in english i can't use google translate now uh, or you'll have to wait till i'm in the air to speak back to you all right so we're going to keep our eye on the v speeds and also on the the flap speeds to tell us when to uh, retract the flaps um i want to quickly show you something else paul are you there nope he's left okay i'm gonna try to remember he helped me the last time i just can't remember all of these things so let's quickly see uh, it's not the special effects okay so under visual effects i'm going to enable the flight director helper uh, just work through all of them yoke neutral okay the other one is under realism settings apu yoke neutral tolerance i'm going to leave it to real because it's going to show you it more prominently the reason why I enabled the flight director helper is because I want to show you, if you are new, how to get to connect your autopilot easily. All right, so now the other thing I need is I want my cross air back. Uh, where on earth do we get that? Maybe it's under display variants. Displays. there all right so your single queue flight director i've got on no so the reason is i want the crosshair okay and and with the settings i've just given you what you will see is if i'm not balanced and i cannot engage the autopilot the uh, uh, little line of the crosshair that is out of balance will flash it will change color and all you need to do is you need to fly in the direction of that bar so i'm going to give you a demonstration so we're going to look at the speeds 
Okay, we're going to look at this thing. One of the things you need to realize is that little box, that's your aircraft nose. And what you need to do is that crosshair needs to be in the middle. Okay, so it needs to be balanced. There must be no push and pull forces from the yoke. So the aircraft must be trimmed correctly um, and no external push and pull from your yoke. Once the aircraft is in balance and that little block is in the crosshair, you can engage your command A. All right, so I'll demonstrate to you how Zebo made it easy for the new guys to actually do that. Then what we're going to look at as we climb, you'll see we currently set at 94.3. That's our uh, takeoff thrust setting. And you'll see those green little markers as well as the thrust is going to reduce to what it is 83.8 once we hit 1000 so between 1000 and 3000 we're going to be on a reduced thrust which is that noise abatement number one that Sasso was talking about and then you'll see at 3000 it's going to bug up again and you'll actually hear it if you listen to the sound let me get my volume right as well yeah it looks cool so those are the couple of things that we're going to look at. Uh, you cannot engage autopilot before 400 feet. Once we go past 400 feet anytime, once this thing is in balance, we're going to be able to engage command A. Ooh, it's raining. Look at that. Bonus. Bonus. Okay, I want to give you another tip. I want to quickly give you another tip. Hello, hello. Yeah, welcome. Welcome. Um, I'm going to quickly go and I'm going to look at LTF. I have one more question about okay. your trim. Yeah. So when, when you're setting the trim, uh, in order to get the trim absolutely spot on, mm. where is your main setting for the trim? Because you were talking about the trim. Yeah. It's in uh, your it's in your last page here. Oops. Yeah. Your takeoff reference. Speed? Yeah, there it says trim is 575. It's next to the V speeds. It right, shows okay. there. Okay, so it says 575. How would you manually set it though once you've got that 575? Well, you're going to move your trim wheel until yeah. you get to kind of where it looks like it's right. Okay, right. I use Linda yeah. to get it right. Now, the tolerance on that is supposed to be 0 0.5 points. Okay, so even if you are not on 0.75, you should be able to still get your normal operation at 5.5 or at 6.25. Okay, okay. so there Thank is a help. bit of tolerance there. Um, in the in the, sorry, in the real aircraft, and you move it like that. In the real aircraft, when I used to fly jump seat with the guys at Manga uh, way back in the day. Um, what they told me is they always add uh, just a little bit more, okay? And believe it or not, when you when you fly the level up aircraft, that's actually simulated in the year. Um, at this point in time, I just add like slightly little more just to put it up, okay? Um, yeah, we, we were talking about all the V-speeds and the noise abatements and all those things. We never mentioned the minimum flap retraction altitude, um, which is usually a thousand. Sasso mentioned it, but he never connected MFRA to what he was talking about. Okay, so while you're talking about it, I mean, I can, I can tell the guys the same. That's your uh, minimum flap retraction traction altitude so if we say we're at 1000 ah, sorry 320 feet uh, you can just as a matter of interest you can add your barrow and you can take that up to 1000 above 320 so that's a guide to help you not to retract your flaps too quickly you know, so it's a rule of thumb kind of a thing I will just have that there, but it's not the focus of what we're trying to get to. Um, I never use it, to be honest. I don't think anybody's ever seen me in, in my streams actually use it, but yeah, it's there. All right, so, hello, David. Good morning, good morning. Um, okay, so are you guys ready? I think we, 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 we can go. Oh, no, hang on. There was something I wanted to show you. That's why I had this up. Okay. So what I'm going to do, this is a tip that Sasso gave me for, from the real world as well. We know that we're going to use runway 36. 
okay and we now have rain now currently we can still see the runway and, and, and so on but in in low visibility situations what he says is advisable is to actually go oops wrong button we have to set our ILS for the runway and I'll show you quickly so we're going to use 11135 and 11135 right so what's going to happen is we now have a localizer that's going to be on on that runway and that will help us to keep the center line it's easy as that just another friendly tip you know so when we actually need to see where we're going it's going to be easier good morning scotsman right okay let's go assuming you're not online then the car no i'm not no i'm not it's it's probably going to interfere with my training the tower wanted to go offline sir and i said okay now well then i'll just go offline as well well i was i was put to uh, a mountain three, today six. had to take avoidance yeah you see you see i'm glad i gave you guys the prep talk and you were there yesterday you knew it was coming and all those things yeah he gave me a funny route to land yeah you did, apolo did apologize to me, Nicole. Okay. I took the avoidance and, and at the same time uh, advised him. Gotcha. All right, so I'm just checking that my tiller is kind of center. All right, um, just want to check, see if there is any wind. No, there's no wind registered. If we look at the top here, Oopsie, what happened there? All right, so we've got wind at 10 degrees and it's variable. Um, no, we don't care, it's not that much. Okay, so let's go. Uh, sorry, it's uh, variable at 10 knots. That's what I wanted to say. Woo! terminologies right i'm gonna push my throttles to 60 once it passes to to above 40 percent i'm gonna press toga all right guys the reason we use toga is it is a managed takeoff uh, facility in the fmc it uses the computer to calculate all kinds of things for you if you simply push your throttles forward or you press n1 that's not toga that is just taking you and giving you raw power so there's no calculation no consideration whatever you see now look at our localizer there there's a little bubble so we can actually follow center line a bit easier so in low visibility nice okay so we're going to take off and go gear up right i'm going to zoom in a little bit to show you now now what I'm going to do Acceleration altitude. I'm just going to go out you see there see if I turn away from the localizer or at least the you know the path why are we not accelerating okay there we go my bad sorry guys okay so anyway in any event the moment I'm out of balance, do you see that the bar starts flashing? And basically what it's telling you is the bar that flashes is the direction you need to fly to. Okay. So we are completely out of sync now. We, we've confused this little aircraft. So let's just turn a little bit back to where we need to go. I obviously made some very harsh movements there. So in order for us to get our autopilot to actually engage now, we must have it in a position where it's not flashing and that little um, square of ours is somewhere in the middle. So we need to find a balance. All right, you see there in the middle, I pressed the command A and now it's taking it. 
Okay, so when you guys go and practice, all the new pilots, make sure that your neutral tolerance is set to simply because then it gives you a wider space to operate in and make sure that the flight director helper is on. And as you saw there, once it starts flashing, you need to fly in the direction uh, of the flashing. And that way you can then balance it and once your nose is somewhere there in the middle you press your button and it will engage the command A and then you maximum just have to speed practice for wipers. sorry combine them the maximum speed for wipers oh yeah maximum speed for wipers is actually um well useful speed is like 180 knots i went way past that because i was talking too much but uh, you shouldn't really use it above 180 knots thank you no problem. All right, so there we go. We we in the air, and now we just you know fly. Okay, the one thing we did not look at because we were concentrating on that thing is obviously the cutback and that's why it wasn't accelerating remember i just asked the most stupid question why is it not accelerating it's because i told it not to all right so you live and learn anyway it's it's gone back already so in a in a uh, following stream somewhere remind me to show you the cutback to actually show you but you can obviously go play with it just go set it and then take off you'll immediately see you'll see the bugs you know fall down uh between 1000 and 3000 and all of a sudden the, you know after 3000 the acceleration happens again and stuff like that so apologies for not showing you that and and so on but you, you saw the excitement things happen fast Right, so we said earlier our transition is like 12,000 foot. So um, depending on if you've been cleared or not, and in our case, we're going to pretend we were cleared to a higher altitude. I'm just going to hit the standard button already. We're not going to stop before 12,000, so it's irrelevant. There are no altitude restrictions that we need to be on the correct Q and H. So that's it. That's the story. All right, if you watch the replay of the video, you will also see at the, you know, all these little green stripes, how I started retracting my flaps. So the moment you go above a green stripe, you need to go one flap up, one flap up. The moment when we descend, we're gonna go below this, the little line, and then you add flaps again. Ah, yeah, the Burko flyer, yeah, sounds good. I'm glad you like it. Approaching transition. All right, we don't care for that. We can also reset that. You must be ready for another coffee. Yeah, Uncle John, I'll go grab another one just now. I don't know why I had the foresight to make two cups before I started the stream, but that was that was marvelous magic. Good thinking. Yeah. Good planning. Yeah. Zebo, are you watching? I'm just curious, are you watching? The last release is beautiful. Yeah, I like 17.
Yes. <laughs> well, Dave, here in South Africa, it's getting warm now. Um, I'm sitting here without a shirt, so that's why the camera's also off. You don't want to see that. Um, we don't want to scare people off the channel. So uh, it's getting nice and warm here now, man. Summer is on its way for us. Trust me, it's not a pretty sight. Yeah. <laughs> Shush. What do you know? <laughs> ah, Uncle John. <laughs> Are you? Hmm? Terrible, aren't I? Yeah, no, no, you could have kept that remark to yourself, but I, I, it's, it's fine, I feel you, it's fine. When you're here in I'm, December, I'm we'll sure. take some pictures. When you're here in December, we'll take some pictures, we'll share that, show them. Okay. Hmm, <laughs> you're sure? <laughs> maybe not, maybe not, Peter. No, maybe not the shirt. Uh. So guys, if you have any questions, I suggest you start pushing them onto the stream or yeah, in Discord or somewhere, you know, that, that we can discuss it or not. If you just want to relax, that's also fine. I'm I'm kind of exhausted talking so much. Grab a coffee then. Oh, okay, grab one just now. Fine, that I can order you one. No, it's fine, Uncle John. Um, actually, they're not here. Sean and Rena has left. Okay. It's only me and Rena. Yeah, but John and I are already in the fib lines here at the airport, so we can order one. Okay, cool. Okay, uh, I see everybody wants to chase me away, so let me go quickly. I'll be back in five minutes or so. Go grab a coffee, guys. He's done you proud this morning. Any of you guys watching, you're always welcome to come into Discord if you need any personal help. Uh, you'll see the link at the bottom of the vid. Come into Discord, we're a very friendly group. If you've got a problem, somebody on the ESOP will be there to sort it for you. Yeah, and the ad advice at almost any subject, eh? Absolutely. There's always somebody that can answer your question. Yeah, I'm surprised how how much time you you are you all are on uh, on Discord.
gents, I'm back. Thank you for for yes, waiting. Sir. Hey. Yeah. Welcome back. Uh, just, just tell the guys, Nico. What? What? That if they ever have any problems and they need to get to talk somebody, come into Discord. Yeah, I told him the same, Uncle John. Okay. No, I told them earlier because you can't do this kind of training on Facebook or on a forum or somewhere in text. There's, there's just too much. There's, I don't know. If you don't see it and you don't experience it and if you don't get your answers to your questions, you're going to struggle. Yep. And there's no such thing as a stupid question. Yeah. If there's something you're not sure about, then it's not stupid. Yeah. Yep. Hi Nico. Hello, hello. Um, hi. As I'm, I'm uh, with the VA already for a while, but first time in Discord today. Yes. I'd like to thank you. Really, this this refreshment is is really good. Also for I think getting new people into Zibo uh, or into mm -hmm. the VA. I mm -hmm. myself flew over 70 flights with VA already, good. typically alone in yeah. Iveo, but yeah. uh, getting ready to group flight with you but it's a little bit intimidating as I must admit <laughs> <laughs> yeah. although looking forward to it yeah the 7 zero Zulu Saturdays for some reason is a bit challenging but I'll mm -hmm. give it a try maybe next week well look um, I have to in all honesty actually do a couple of later flights again I'm not sure where you would reside in the world but I mean we used to fly Saturday evening and sa Sunday evening as well it's just that I've been pressed for time a little bit uh, but in due course I think we need to reset that so instead of just having 700 Zulu we're probably going to then revert back to the 1600 Zulu as well additionally okay so I hope that helps I'm in the same uh, time zone just Saturdays and Sundays are in the morning a little, little bit uh, family okay. uh, wise challenging but yeah any afternoon flights would be great actually so okay. I'm looking forward to it maybe not not necessarily you know mm. uh, landing in Innsbruck yeah, with yeah. 15 planes yeah but uh, any no. any any fly uh, group flying is really I think great even to watch yeah so yeah. thanks a lot for that it's really good no problem Dante we've had a chat to us um, me Uncle John, um, Trying, Denton, and Sasso. Okay, we are thinking of putting together more group training flights. Okay, so the reason I'm mentioning that is any time you or anybody else watching this video or stream or listening to my voice here, anytime you need IVO exposure and training to get more comfort and stuff, look out for the South African flights because in South Africa, the whole of South Africa is like a training space okay for us and it's been that way for many years already two three years i think and um, so when you see us fly here that's exactly the time you guys need to join us because those atc guys will you know know that you're part of us and you'll get the same vip treatment and the training you know most of all because um, i know it's a bit daunting i've been there uh, we all went through that process of getting used to it so um, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's my first suggestion. Also, when you see Gary Hubbard up in uh, uh, Ireland way, he's also one of the trainers. And then Jordan and the guys in North America, uh, when you see them online, that's another one of our um, training spaces. You know, so we've got, and, oh, and, and I almost forgot about the Nordic division. Um, mostly, I want to be honest with you, those that guys there, Michael and his team, uh, Scandinavia around, uh, Norway, Sweden, those those places. Um, if they see a ticks, we've got a special relationship with them as well. So just make a note, a remark in your IVA flight plan, something to the effect of new pilot. And I promise you the guys will take good care of you. You don't have to worry. So, um, but if you want to join with us and get first hand experience, South Africa, I think will be the first place to get to. Sounds excellent. Great. Yeah, I will. I will give it a try. Uh, I'm, I re reside in Poland, so not uh, not far away from all these places. Uh, so in real time, it's also not not uh, yeah, very much challenging. But mm -hmm. 
yeah, I will look for some opportunities. Cool. Great, yeah. thanks. Yeah, just just always remember we're here for you. Okay. Well done. To uh, I, I know that. I can I say from it. experience, just come over because uh, they're all great guys to it and uh, they're very willing to help you. So just come over. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm, I'm watching you already for over a year, so it's just about Good. you know getting uh, into some group flying. Of uh, course, uh, flying alone in Iveo and yeah. in VA, it's great fun. So mm -hmm. uh, thanks to the the, the material and uh, your mm -hmm. notes, your videos, I actually mm -hmm. learned from them. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, now time for next step. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, let me see. Thanks a lot. Steve has just reminded me the standard IFR night in South Africa. Okay, if you guys need the extra time, uh, is on a Thursday evening, our time, obviously. It starts at about 1700 Zulu, 17 to 1730 Zulu. The South African division of High Bay is usually open, so always remember that if you need the extra challenge. Uh, David, coming back to you and the family and all, I've, I know the challenge, my friend. I know, I know. Um, my daughter interrupted me twice in the beginning of the stream. You know they don't care. The family, <laughs> and I don't, I don't mean it n nasty. Um, you know, family comes first always. You know, and you have to just work around them. I had to put the stream, you know, on mute twice just to handle my daughter this morning. Yeah. You know? You have to get used to it a little bit. It takes time as well. Yeah. Yeah, it <laughs> does. It does. Yeah. So, yeah happens I must be honest I didn't expect um, you know to do training this morning we just started talking here on discord and Paul had something to say and a couple of other guys said and I said okay let's do the training I'm so glad I did I'm really so glad I did yeah it was nice eh? mm. I think it's also good to have a fresh uh, material for mm. uh, people who are about to join yeah, or start. Yes. Because uh, I, I myself uh, knew, let's say, 80%, uh, mm. give or take, of, the, of, that, of that stuff. But noise abatement or this, uh, some of the stuff that you don't have to use, it's mm. always, you always learn something new. Yeah? So uh, anytime I join when mm. also Sasso is there, I learn new things. Uh, good. Uh, or some, you know, side comments, and mm -hmm. it's it's really interesting, and anytime. So that's that's great. Good. Well, we're not done yet, so give me a minute, and we'll get going again. Uh, Tommy, um, sorry to see you go, but I do understand. Uh, obviously, you can watch the video later, uh, guys. Just please also note it takes Google sometimes hours, if not a day or two, before they add the comments in the stream to the stream uh, video okay so when you come back later and you can't see the comments it's not me that disabled it it's just the rendering takes time okay so just bear that in mind okay okay are you guys ready for the next part of this training yes sir all right so in the beginning you you saw me um rename that xml file and this is the reason why so in in our descent training when we go to our forecast page if you downloaded and renamed that xml file correctly uh, you get this link it says upload uh, or uplink data right so we're going to click it and you can see it falls in the winds for us as well as q and a so i'm going to execute that but i'm now going to scoot over to the other fmc because it's very important there's one thing that might have changed and it is the q and h all right and you have to have the correct q and h for the descent otherwise vnav path will not be correct and especially if you do an r nav approach you're either going to be too high or too low so this is par for the course it's an it's an absolute must you have to have the correct q and h and the best way to then get it and make sure that you have the correct one because this is what the zebo will see and what the zebo will use is we going to ask the zebo to tell us what what it sees and the use it so we're gonna go to enter the actual ICAO we're gonna send it and then we're gonna read the message and then we need to make sure that that q and is correct right so the q and h is still expected to be 1011 so we're going to leave that the next step 
before we forget is we need to go and set the QNH in standby all right I know in Microsoft Flight Simulator and all the different variations of it you press the B button and it fixes the QNH for you into the sim in X plane it doesn't work that way you have to do it like in the real world so go put that in there while you know what it is and uh, then you know this is done okay next step is you click on VNAV I beg your pardon you click on progress I'm talking nonsense um, progress page then if you look at Altai that's where we're going to um, Antalya and you look at where we are at currently currently we have five tons of fuel we are expected to have 4.4 so there's a difference of 600 kilograms now if you go to your INET reference page that's your gross weight currently but minus 600 is going to be what 64.8 so if you put 64.8 in there it will give you the correct predicted V speeds and then we select our 30 or 40 whatever we need okay so change that get the correct speed put it in place if there is a wind correction you can add your 5 or 10 or whatever in there and uh, you, it, it will then automatically put that into the calculations for you otherwise you're going to have to remember uh, you know to add it manually yourself so this is a nice place to maybe add a, a 10 all right so this will then determine your final approach speed all right so we're going to put it back to five all right another thing in the boeing fmc you can see this is a runway uh, ils 18 charlie and it's zulu there's your course so there is your um frequency that you need to set in your nav radio or your MMR that's the identifier that you're going to see in the primary flight display uh, which we can talk about later and that's the course heading that the Zebo mod is expecting okay so we can then go to set up the ILS just move a little bit in a better position to see better right okay so I've shown you that in the system let us quickly get our chart up and show you this in the Navigraph chart as well there it says 1087 182 and that is what we need to set so 1087 right you don't have to put the last zero in the zebra it works like the real aircraft you can just put, put it over uh, into active it will add the zero for you same thing here 1087 Right, there it is now the VOR this is also it's again good airmanship sorry I'm not showing you the other side as well um, it's difficult to show both especially with the Sun shining like that but you get the idea you do the same on both sides um, if there is a VOR and for some reason you lose your FMC it's advise uh, advisable to add sorry English going advisable to add the actual VORs in case you need to use it to vector yourself in any direction uh, if you get radials or if you need to come back to the airport so we're just for fun we're going to put 114 in there you can either cycle it like I do or you can you know just add the two zeros so 11400 that's right okay so that's where you get now so it's 1087 and 114 right so just make sure it's still what we're looking at 1087 that's correct now 182 is the core setting right so let's go back quickly before we set it it's 182 correct so Let that coffee go cold. No, don't worry about that. 182. Right. By the way, you're supposed to start this planning about 100 nautical miles before top of descent. Because if you look at where we are at now, the top of descent is coming closer. There it is already. And if you're not ready by then, you might run out of time. Okay, so I'm a bit slow. We'll catch up just now. right okay so that is done the other thing we can do is we can set our auto brakes 
it's a nice long runway I'm gonna use auto brake too I'm not too worried about it uh, right then what we need to do is on the chart we need to see where do we descend to now if you look at the chart it says there that's the beginning of that little arrow for the ILS it tells you we need to be at 3000 all right so what I'm going to do and obviously this is now flying without ATC otherwise the ATC will tell you where he wants you to go to but for our purposes we're going to go to 3000 okay now if you set the 3000 before you reach the top of descent Approach okay top of descent. and there she warns us as well what will happen is the Boeing will actually start to descend automatically Um, which key the weight wheel are you just talking about the the, the little knobs that I'm turning um, in custom I'm thinking now is it the hardware yeah under hardware smart uh, AP MCP knobs switch the smart on and then all you do is you click and hold if you click and hold it will use one algorithm or if you start to turn it the faster you turn the faster it will turn so but you need to switch on that uh, that little knobby uh, option 182 so that's your options uh, uh, right uh, what do we need to do all right the one thing we have not done is our minimums oh, i did when the mouse gets stuck like that sorry let's go back to our chart right so if you look at the chart we've now started at the top we've got the localizer frequency we've got the course heading right we um, also did our VOR because it was available we also set our descent altitude and there you see in the background uh, the aircrafts actually started its descent without us doing anything again just to reiterate start your uh, descent planning at about 100 nautical miles so that you don't run out of time okay then if we look at the bottom over here it gives us our minimums we're going to do the ILS today and a DA uh, um, height a decision altitude height is 372 and then what we're going to do uh, Dave I've done it so many millions of times I don't actually have a checklist open I do it from memory but when I do actual training with the guys I, I usually have my training checklist open and the training checklist is like it's made for dummies it literally says step one step two and it goes down to step 500 or whatever it will be you know it's, it's one line after another it's not like the one that you get on the glare shield over here you know this this is more for uh, seasoned pilots you know guys who've got experience this one because it's very abbreviated my actual training checklist is like multiple multiple pages and it's line by line by line so when when you go to the description below the video and you go to my private hangar follow that link in the Zebo folder you'll see there's a training checklist it's this it's the same link that you get if you go to my forum page on the Zebo forum you can download the training checklist and it will tell it to you step by step by step 100 percent 100 percent i identified the need to do it step by step for myself and i was pleasantly surprised when i realized that a lot of people you know like to learn exactly the same way you know when you deal with people usually they tell you how good a product is if you read an ordinary manual it tells you how good the product is and what you can do with it but it doesn't tell you step by step how you can use it for yourself and uh, I've, I've just decided that's the way I'm gonna write my manuals it's yeah this is how you do it step one step two step three so I'm glad it works for other people as well all right coming back coming back to this thing quickly we never set it right so we want to use oh and by the way we always use the class C you'll see at certain airports you've got class A B C D E uh, all listed for you always use the class C minimums all right so it's 372 and then what we're going to do is just want to get to a point where we've got all the knobs open 
I'm going to click and hold that one. Ooh, no, a wrong way. It's remembered where it was. So we want to be at 372. Right, 372, there we go. So now on the PFD, um, that IATY is going to be displayed somewhere here. You'll see it. It's There's your um, frequency, your heading. Uh, it will give you the DME, and as far as I know, the, the identifier will be in the front there. I'm speaking under correction. Damn it, I can't even remember now. We'll see. We'll see when it identifies it. You'll see that that name is going to be there. And the reason they do that is sometimes you, you approach the airport from the wrong side, and then it will tell you if it identifies correctly or not. Because um, in the old days, a lot of pilots unfortunately made the mistake of landing on the wrong side of the runway because they didn't actually, you know, put two and two together. So they tried to make it foolproof now. So you'll see. Right, so we've got our reference speeds, we've got the minimums, we've got our uh, Q&H set up. So the moment that goes yellow, oh, I never showed you that. Show you this. Hey, break. Thank you, Uncle John. Right. Um, forecast page. On the forecast page, you've got the transition flight level. That value over there determines when that green standard changes and you need to press the standard button to go to the local Q&H. Now, if we look at the actual chart, you'll find the, f the actual transition altitude, which is usually about 1,000 to 1,500, okay, variable, um, different to your actual flight level. Flight level is the higher one and that is um, you know the actual transition altitude. So from flight level 160 down to 15,000 uh, well, then because we don't call it flight level anymore then it's an altitude. In that space you need to just press the button to make sure that you go over onto the actual local Q&H there. All right, so just be that in mind. We'll do that as we get there. Uh, the Burko Flyer, if you set it on the radio, it's not a problem. But if you set it on the barrow, it's a problem. Because not many airports are at sea level. So the 200 foot AGL down there is not very useful. But if you were to go to radio and you set the radio, to 200 it means that it's 200 foot above ground level so that that is useful that you can do all right so there so when it says radio 200 it means that you will be 200 foot above ground level perfect but when you set it over there that is referencing sea level so if your aircraft is not at sea level the 200 is going to really not not be that great to have all right that's why we read it off the charts because it obviously takes into account the airport elevation and in relation so to, to give you a little bit more information that 372 and that 200 is actually the same place so, i've stowed it and on yes no not yet not yet Right, uh, let me use Google Translate and see what our friend here is saying. Give me a second. Give me a second.
Guys, if anybody can translate that for me that I can understand uh, better, I would gladly answer it. But I don't understand the question all that well. Um, Google Translate seems to have its own idea of what what he said and it doesn't really help me. Where is Hakan when you need him? Hakan, where are you? <laughs> the sender, the sender needs to translate level. it. Ready for yeah. approach checklist. He knows which lang la language it is. It's Turkish. It's Turkish. Is it? Okay. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, it's Turkish. Yes. Okay. Uh, Nico, I think he's meaning how do you get it on your uh, EFB, the, the, the map. Oh, the, the map. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, before we get there, quickly, you see it's ch it's changed to yellow there or orange, whatever you see there, and we're at 15. Uh, that's when, before you really you get to 15, you need to eat it. It's not going to kill you if you miss it by, by a bit. But there you can see now we're on the local Q&H, and now we're a bit fast again. Okay. And so, he's also stating that it's a very useful video for him and he's thanking you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, sorry I'm a bit slow. I don't always understand. And, and thank you, Peter. It, it, I appreciate the help. Uh, let's quickly get the video. Where's the video? Uh, I seem to have removed that video from my what's his name from my uh, channel I'm looking for it <laughs> what, 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 what? We the like auto, Nicole. The autocorrect. Oh, Nicole. Don't worry, I, I can live with that. <laughs> Guys, I'll, I'll be back reading those things first. I just want to see where's my video on the tablet. He's been called worse. Don't worry about it. Yeah. I found it, I found it, I found it, I found it. I was saying, do you want me to look for it? But yeah, I got it. Yeah. There you go, there's the link. Go watch that video. It's a four and a half minute video. It tells you exactly how to get the route on there. And it's all free. It's not going to cost you anything. Right, yeah, okay. let us know. Okay. Uh, let us know if that's what you what you're looking for. Yeah. So let's see. Okay, the three eighty six is exactly the barrel, and the two hundred is what your radar or altimeter will say. So basically, three eighty six and two hundred is exactly the same spot in the air. The one is just measured from uh, sea level and the other one is measured with uh, the radar from ground level. We don't use the radar unless we use auto land. Okay, so CAT 3 kind of situation or sometimes CAT 2. But in a CAT 1 we usually just use the barrow. So that's why they give you both. It's, it's a reference, uh, Dave. Alright, after reading the... Where the level they're pushing the legs button. Okay, Robert, 
what you need to do is look at your log text or look at your um, Windows event viewer and tell us why it crashed then we can try and help you I have no idea um, if if you can help us with that that would be nice all right and you're welcome all right Dogan I need to translate more all right okay then And you're welcome. Okay. We're getting close to sterile. Yeah. Right, okay, so here we are getting closer to these mountains and things, gents. So we're going to follow VNAF path. If you follow VNAF path, you will be okay. All right. The reason I enabled the terrain is to show you how close we're going to get. Even while following the VNAF path, we should get at least one terrain warning. Okay, and that's the reason I picked this flight to show you guys that there are normal operations where it actually happens that you get, uh, and you obviously need to discern whether it is true or not, or dangerous or not, and things like that. So, we're going to just follow the aircraft and the path down. Oh, hang on a second, hang on a second. You know what? With all me busy, we missed that completely. We missed that. We're already at the point where I need to actually turn. My goodness. Yeah, I, passed it. Yeah. I actually said sterile. And your speed, what's your speed? Yeah, well, I've got my speed break out. Uh, so I'm going to turn to heading mode. Then what I'm going to do is I am now going to go to my Lex page and I'm going to pick up on the final approach fix, bring it to the top, hit execute, it's drawn the path for us and we can go back to LNAV. My goodness, I was really looking forward to talk about that incident. It obviously did not trigger because I would have heard it and you guys would have heard it. So uh, we, we obviously missed it just just. Right, I'm actually going to pull flaps one now to, to help me slow down a little bit. Shoo! Shoo! This last bit of this flight went really fast, man. Flaps one set. Just avoid those mountains, please. Oh, no, 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 I'm okay, sir. I'm... I'm okay. Snowy is not okay. Snowy just wants to jump on my lap the whole time. No doggy. You stay at the bottom of me. Not now. Wrong time. Well, it's a good example, Nico, that you have to stay ahead of the plane. Yeah. Uh, if, if I did not do my descent planning, if VNAF path was not correct and all those things were not set up from the beginning correctly, um, we would have ended up in the mountains. And it, it's a testimony to what can happen when you just set up everything correctly. You know, the, the aircraft is made to fly properly and to, to be safe. You know, and it it can only do what you tell it to do. It's not going to do anything else. So either you tell it to do something or you don't. In which case, it will remain busy doing what you the last command was that you gave it. So, you know, it happens. It's beautiful, huh? Oh, it's nice. It's huh? Yeah, nice, nice. I forgot my wheel well lights, they were still on. Oops. Alright, let's get the passenger signs on. Uh, they back on. Lenovo will handle all the lights. We've got the auto brakes. We've got our speed brake is armed. Yeah, maybe best to stay on 5,000 for a bit. Mm.
Oh, you mean the trim wheel? That one, that one. That's the trim wheel. Go back, let's get your question again. Okay, when we land, when we land, ask me again or remind me to show you my key mappings. Okay, um, or my joystick mappings. I've got an, an Anicom Alpha and Bravo yoke and throttle. And uh, so I've set up all the mappings through there, but um, I'm not sure what the actual keyboard Radio mappings Alpha. would be. Never use it. So we'll have to see the commands and then you can go and find them for keyboard if you need them. Right, so we are just over 20 nautical miles from our airport. You'll see that the identifier and everything comes in. I think it's 18 nautical miles. Right, so we're on the VNAV path. There's our anticipation cues for the ILS. So I'm going to Localize press the approach the button. Don't press the approach button before those ghost cues are in place, guys. Um, and there you go. There. It's just come alive at about, well, 20 nautical miles, I would say. So there you can see, there's your identifier, uh, India Alpha Tango Yankee. So if we go back, you'll see the India Alpha Tango Yankee. So you know you're on the right. Um, runway and the right ILS. There's your course heading. There's your DME, and uh, it obviously tells us where on the localizer and we have this. So we'll Please for the trim is the is the, is the straight brackets, the square brackets. Square brackets. Okay. Thousand to go. You mean those ones? I've put it on the stream there. Just confirm. Yeah, those are those. Yep. That's it. Okay. All right. There you go. Thank you so much. All right, next story that we need to look at is this. Must approach, climb on whatever, whatever to 1,600 foot, then turn right, and not before DME from there. We don't worry about that too much, and I'll tell you why. Okay, then climb to 3,000. Okay, so what we're going to do. Ooh, I missed that, somebody. Subscribe. Thank you. Welcome. Um, okay. What we're going to do is the moment that um, either the glide slope becomes active, all right, or I'll show you there's another bar that appears here on the side. Once you see that bar, or once we go below 3000, because the wording says we need to climb to 3000. Okay. So we need to wait until we've descended below 3000. Okay. Once we've done that, okay, we can actually set. And you know what? Look at that. Look at that. This is this is obviously a coincidence. Uh, our MCP value is set to 3,000. So the point I'm trying to make is you need to set your go around altitude at some point in time. Okay, so just happened to be the same. All right. should be flaps five. Mm. Old one too many. Slope and you know what? I forgot, Last Uncle John. Okay. My cars again. Ah. <laughs> Are you not going to go around or not? No, I'm not going to go do a go around. Radio altimeter. The top and throw it what you would do. 
Ooh, this wind is nasty, yeah. Right, I'm okay. gonna... Yeah, I hear you, Uncle John. Um, right, so we're putting gear down. And we're gonna go... Flaps 15. I think that should be flaps 15. If not, we'll pull another one or so. Yeah, that's flaps, flaps 15. 15 so there you go. Now we're on the glide slope. The ILS is now guiding us. You'll see our indicators have gone dead. Basically, there's no more lights. We can't interfere with the ILS unless we switch the autopilot off. Yeah. Yeah, Ryan, it happens. Eh? It happens. Right, and then as we get closer, we'll just bring our speed down. Now, one of the nice things, you see that little magenta indicator? That's where your speed is for the MCP. If you go and rest it right on top of that line, uh, sorry, the word ref. See, that's your reference speed. All right, so you have 148 plus 5 means 153 now usually depending on exactly where you put it but if you rest it on top it should be at 153 look it's at 153 so you don't have to really go and guess too much um, if you just put it in the correct place visually you'll know you, you're at vref plus 5 okay so just another little tip this is the white bar I was telling you. Sometimes that thing comes up um, in, a, in a position where you might not be on the glide slope yet. And then if, if you see that bar, you also that know that you're on. okay. You can set your go around oh. altitude. So let me quickly get this landing story sorted. All right. So we are in a... Uh, single autopilot configuration if we were to press the go around button now the toga button take off go around button um, we would lose command a so the first thing we would do is we would go flaps 15 then gear up and then we would climb on the fly director uh, and then it's like just a normal takeoff we'll get it in balance switch the autopilot back on and just fly the missed approach so that's the theory behind the whole story Okay, okay. No problem. There is a bit of movement on that wind. I've taken autopilot off and I'm flying manually now, so we need to compensate a little bit. Approaching decision height 200. Minimums. You missed much in the speeds to your throttle. 100. No, no, not. You, you're seeing it late. 50, 40, 30. There you go. I saw it was mismatched, Uncle John, so I quickly put it back. I know I hadn't seen you do it. Yeah, yeah, but because you've got the eight or ten second delay between what I do and and so you know that's the discrepancy. Right, and there we go, we've landed. We've, we've literally landed. Now, I'm going to quickly stop just as I get off here. I want to show you guys something, because we spoke about it, but we, we never showed you. Okay, so just give me a second to get off here, and then I'll show you. Right, we can put the flaps up, we can stow the speed brake, move the... Uh, thrust levers just a little bit forward and then it actually stows everything in the aircraft Dave I'll show you just now we can look at that just now because it's quite comprehensive uh, thanks Rob I appreciate it Rob okay so we're just going to stop over here one other thing that I don't see a lot of people talk about and this is McTrying that brought it to my attention to, to point it out, is you are not vacated off the runway until you've crossed this line. So you can't say as you get off the runway, I've vacated the runway when you haven't passed this line. So just bear that in mind. Another useless tip, but it's a good one. All right. So, um, gents, this add-on is called Stable Approach. So it's, it's free. It's from the org uh, forum.
So if you Google it, just type in explain stable approach, it will take you to the download page. It's a simple plugin. You just drop in your resources plugins and it's marvelous actually. Um, I don't always agree with it, but 90%, 99% of the time. And I've grown used to it. It's just something nice to have because um, I don't know if you actually saw it or maybe you didn't see everything at the top of my screen kind of where the mouse is just above the mouse it actually brings up a lot of visual cues if you forgot to set your speed brake or landing gear isn't down or whatever the, it gives you advisories as you come down it, it will show you it works on all aircraft uh, Dave as far as I know all the ones I fly it uses it yes Nico does it require some configuration for Zibo or Nothing. does it work out of the box works out the box you drop it in your resources plugins the moment you start your aircraft the first time it tells you it's identified the aircraft and it downloads the configuration from its server and then it tells you it's ready to okay. use yeah i i had some problem with uh, some message that it's not, uh, not stabilized uh, uh, but maybe i need to no, 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 no. The, the not stabilized means that your approach is not stabilized. It comes up here on the screen and it tells you that you didn't have a stable approach. Is that the same message that comes here on your screen? Uh, I don't remember now from yeah. the top of my head, but there was some, some uh, uh, or during, during takeoff, uh, during takeoff uh, there was a message that's not stabilized as well. Okay. Uh, which was a bit strange, but maybe maybe I need to investigate. Yeah, yeah, they didn't come back to us. Sorry, Uncle John. If anybody is struggling with their approaches and landings, it's a good aid tool. Yeah, a good tool. A very good tool to help you to work through these things. Okay, I need to quickly show you something. The thing I was talking about. Okay, again, you can get it from my private hangar. The link is below the video in Show More. Just click on Show More. Um, but I want to show you what it looks like. And like I said, I made it, uh, you know, to be useful for everybody from everybody that knows nothing upwards. Okay. Uh, Dogan, I'll translate your message just now. Give me a second. So. Oh, he's saying that he's agreeing with Robert. Okay, cool, cool. Appreciate it. Okay, so this is the comprehensive checklist for the Zebo uh, Model 737NG. This is my training checklist. Okay, this training checklist, as you can see, look, it goes pages and pages and pages. All right, it's got a little checklist there. There we're talking about our landing CG and stuff. Let's quickly go over look, see what that is now turned to. Oh, it's already taken it away now, so it's done with it. Um, okay, anyway, for those of you that don't know about it, look, yeah, yeah, Zebo put a little approach rating and a landing rating as well. It doesn't tell you exactly what it's measuring, but look, you see a landing and an approach rating. This doesn't matter of interest. Okay, so coming back to the checklist, this is available to you guys. This is what I used to teach people, and you'll see it is the most basic of basic. This is where you learn the flows. This is where it teaches you the ifs and the buts and the wins. So if you guys are looking to, to learn the Zebo, you don't have to use this forever, but at least start with this, because this is where it will tell you when to do what, why and why not, and all these things. Like for instance, um, there's your APU start procedure. All right, um, air conditioning and pressurization. It tells you exactly which button to press when and where and all those things. Then um, I want to show you the anti-ice uh, situation for winter ops. I've given you, oh, there's also, there's your air starter unit. It teaches you how to start the aircraft with um, the APU and this is with the air starter unit you know if you go into ground here you've got uh, the ASU over there so you can use the ASU instead of your APU to start you okay and then it also gives you the options for thank you Reinhardt it gives you the options for the de-icing right so over here it tells you the parameters 
and and then in those parameters it gives you the different breakdowns for different de-icing procedures what i've also done is i've made a a provision for basic one for simmers this is just you flying on your lonesome self you don't care about the fcom and boeing <laughs> you know you just want to get going that's one way of doing it and this advanced one this comes from the actual boeing fcom and it tells you step by step by step how to do it properly because the zebo simulates those procedures and with winter coming up for you guys you better start learning this because otherwise you're going to fall out the sky if you don't do it properly um the, there's also a distinction made for short fields and above 10,000 foot okay that that is in year or you know you see different conditions and you must just learn to to identify where you at what you want to use and it tells you exactly so over here we've got like the the bleeds off um takeoff uh, checklist this is after takeoff so this is now stowing the the thing again putting it back to normal operation and so on and as you can see it's like pages upon pages upon pages upon pages plus descriptions and things twixter helped me with some of this okay and i mean i've had other pilots uh, sasso orge um Jan, the name just three of the Zebo pilots, you know, the real guys that helped me through this. And it takes you there, right through to the securing the aircraft checklist at the very end. Um, then that's one thing. Now, the other thing that I'm not sure you guys are aware of, so I just want to show you this as well. Um, visual effects. Uh, yeah. Okay, if you go to visual effects, do you see 3D arrow helper? If you have it on show, all right, and you go to the checklists, yeah, all right, let's go find where we are at. Landing aisle is after landing, okay? See, there's an arrow pointing, it tells you exactly where to go to, all right? So now you can say off speed brake lever check speed brake lever tells you needs to be off and you can tick them uh, pro beat see tells you pro beat needs to come off um, exterior lights as needed see tells you exterior lights uh, after landing procedure I don't know if she did that already or not, but we'll see now. After landing procedure. Let's also start our APU, which is very important. In short, this is the 738 Bible. Yeah. You follow this, you're wrong. Yeah, so so let's get let's get back here. Um After can you please translate Dogan's thing for me again, somebody? Uh Peter, if you're still there. Um Dave, the the question you are asking, does this follow real world procedures? Is it follows the Boeing FCOM? Okay, the different airlines have different SOPs. So if you pick up on a discrepancy between my checklist or the Zebo checklist in here, for instance, okay, both me and Zebo follow the FCOM. All right, we do not subscribe to specific little niggly changes that is an SOP at an, uh, a carrier. Um, and the reason is, uh, strangely enough, believe it or not, the, the one carrier that very quickly in the beginning told us, and I'm talking about the pilots of this real world airline, was Norwegian Air. Norwegian has got multiple SOPs depending on how far north or south their pilots operate. Okay, so even in certain airlines there are different sops you know the guys working high altitude versus the guys working sea level the guys working more south versus more north towards the poles you understand so it's a difficult question to answer it's based upon the fcom but it's not um okay thank you steve it's it's not necessarily going to be a Ryanair versus Southwest or a Jet 2 versus the South African Airways. You understand? It's, uh, I hope you understand what I'm trying to, to say to you. So it's relevant. It's true based on the Boeing FCOM. 
Right, so the engine start switches can go off. Weather radar. Weather radar. We want to switch the weather radar off. So weather radar is off. Uh, flap lever. Flaps are up. And the transponder as needed will, we've got it on standby from Linda's side. Okay, so I'm not going to show you the rest. I just wanted to show you that. Um, and, 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 I mean, yeah. All the tools are there. You just need to know that they are there, how to get to them, and then where to come and ask your questions. I think that's about it, you know. And thank you, Dogen. Um, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, but yeah, thank you. So, guys, I'm just going to park off. Uh, I'm not so much worried about the last bits of SOPs and, you know, funny things. Um, me and Linda usually get out the plane and let the ground crew worry about the rest. So, I'm just going to find a parking spot and relax. I've just received my lunch, so I want to get out of here as soon as possible to eat it before it goes cold. I hope you guys enjoyed the session. Nico, thank you very much. Yeah, it was really great. And thank you for sacrificing your uh, group flying with the rest for giving yeah. this training. It was great. No problem. I'm glad you guys liked it. Oh, I'm just gonna yeah, thank you, for, thank you for the stream, stream Nico. See you later. Cool, man. Thanks, Peter. If you haven't hit the like button already, Please do, it does help. Yeah, it does, it does. Thank you, everybody. I'm literally yeah, going to... Thanks, thanks, Nico. Thanks very much for Pleasure. all your efforts and help. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good uh, with the weekend. Yeah, you guys as well, eh? Right, that's it. Uh, so, got down procedure. Donkey, donkey. Right, so she's going to do her little bit. Put us on the APU there. Gonna flick my switches. Last class stream, Nico. Yeah, I like this. This was excellent. We can put the. Very education. Nah, that's fine, Uncle John. Now I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, chocks and GPU. I think that's bare minimum, and then obviously you know you can open your your doors and just call the ground services, whichever one you use. There are so many available. So. That's it. That's it. Ooh, we have a rich oil baron or something on the plane. I didn't even know. Look, there's his limo. Shutdown procedure complete. <laughs> Burger flyer, enjoy. Ready enjoy. Um, everybody, rest. enjoy. Have a great rest of your weekend and we'll talk in the week sometime. Cheerio. Bye bye. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye.